first time in the chair. Hi. Fun, dude. You like the chair? It's not bad. Yeah. Welcome back to chair. the Monolith Film Podcast. Back with a vengeance. Back on the the beanie pod. Back on our bullshit, you know. Mm. No one the called beanie pod. Hat yet. Still free merch up for grabs. Yeah, if you can read Nick's hat, you get free merch. <laughs> yeah. Um, Dune Part Two. We did Dune One, right? We did a quick little we did a recap. Mini, yeah. We did a mini we, episode. We did, right we, did uh, watched, we, yeah. we field recorded with uh, Steve yeah. after yeah. the movie. He too. loved the movie. That was a ten on ten for him. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't know. What he's talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> so Dune Part Two, directed by our boy Denis Denis Villeneuve. We know him. We love him. Hometown hero. Straight over boys. Though. Um, boys though. So Dune Part Two finishes finishes the the first book. Yes. Right? By what's his name? Who wrote the book? Frank Herbert. Frank, Frank Herbert. Herbert. Frankie. Um, uh, Dune Part 2, what happens? A whole lot? Paul Atreides becomes a Fremen and then becomes a dick. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right? That's, that's well, a yeah. Good, yeah. good enough summary, I think. Mm, yes. A lot of sand. A lot of sand. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> During the desert. I was thinking the same thing. So first impressions. Dante, what'd you think? Just keep it, keep it. First, keep it impressions, first impressions, I thought it was good as a movie. Um, changed a lot from the book. You read it, man. You read the first few? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, good. At least we have someone who read them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I read, I read, yeah. I read part of the first book. Okay. Mm. How about what? Oh, I'm, I... What part percentage? Half. Okay. Yeah. Well, first he, impressions? He probably just finished the first movie with the first, the first part yeah, of the book. Yeah, exactly. So okay. I got, I got, I received the book actually from my brother on the Christmas of the same year. That mm. Dune Part One came out, mm. so I started reading it, and then other life happens. Is then... the first one close to the book? The first one's pretty close. very close, and the second one's not close. Uh, I'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah. We'll okay. get into it. Yeah. Okay. First impressions, then, class. I really enjoyed it. Immersive experience uh, for me, um, but again, after like reading up from other people, it seems to me that this is not as like the book mm. as much. But mm-hmm. as a movie going experience, to Dante's point. I really enjoyed it. Had a lot of fun. And I have a lot of thoughts about the creative choices about the characterization of each character in this one. Cool. So, yeah. Okay. My first impressions was that I liked it more than the first one. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I agree with you on that, but like, I think the dialogue of the first one was so terrible. This one seemed more normal. It seemed more of a normal kind of popcorn movie. The last one, I don't know if they were setting up too much stuff or too much, like, prologue before anything happens I don't it was know. very prologue yeah it was too long to set it up and yeah. too many fucking this guy this guy and this planet and all kinds of stuff so the second one was more of a straightforward story but i still didn't think it was fantastic but mm. before we start i want to comment on on how we saw it i don't know mm. where you went to go see it because we you saw it without us no so i saw it in sherbrooke uh just on a regular and Dave, regular this guy fucking bailed on us <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. he had a dinner okay <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw it at a regular I didn't go watch it in IMAX I didn't go watch it in any fancy version yeah. I just saw it at a regular movie theater in Sherbrooke in English um, it was packed and uh, halfway through the movie the fire alarm struck <laughs> so we had to get out for 20 minutes oh, that sucks. and then we had to come back in and it smelled like popcorn throughout the entire uh, throughout the entire like theater but immediately once I was in a minute in I was already immediately immersed back into mm. the movie mm. so that, that, that to me is actually mm. very important when I watch a movie I was immediately back into in Dune, so that that's was pretty hilarious. cool. That's so that was, funny. That was fun. That. It was a funny. It was really funny because actually, story. It when when the bell was ringing, it was during the scene where the war, like not the war, but where they um, were trying to destroy that like huge um, oil. Sorry, not oil. Spice mining machine. Yeah. And so people like we all thought in the movie it was packed. We all thought like yeah, as part of the movie. But like you know, it continued. Oh, the fire alarm! Yeah, the fire alarm. That's funny. So we were like, "That's part of the movie." But then they started. The people were talking, and it was like, "Wait, that kind of sounds." Did the lights come on? Well, then they did. Two minutes later, the manager came in. He's like, "Guys, it's not the movie. You got to get out." So we had to all get up, leave, wait twenty minutes, and yeah, there was like uh, trucks, police. And then we came back in. I'm assuming it's just the popcorn burnt through a, too much. And oh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most likely. It, honestly, it smelled so much like popcorn after that. But yeah. So we, we tried the new Screen X at Ooh. Cineplex. Whoa! Ooh. What was um, that like? <clears throat> it's like Square, right? For it, it, Oh, no, is that the thing with the multiple? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it's a game review. Yeah. 
the curved, the, 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 curved the, the curved display. Uh, you haven't lived review. until you have three screens. Yeah. Uh, the uh, for our international viewers, Cineplex is a cinema chain here in Canada, and they have this new thing called Screen X, where the walls of the cinema are yeah. also screen, but it's not like it's not like they blast the movie in extra wide. It's just that they I think they use AI something like that to artificially extend the scene to the walls to make it really? more immersive. I thought it was just the whole... The, no, the... no, no. So, like, if you if you don't look at the sides, you're not supposed to miss anything. So, for, like, 90% of the movie, it was just sand. It's just, it's just like, peripheral. Yeah. yeah it's, 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 not, it's not even in focus. It's just blurred yeah. colors almost. Oh. But you see shadows of people, and then they'd come and frame normal, stuff like that. That's yeah. Kind of cool. Yeah, Pretty so cool. it's really just peripheral. Mm-hmm. And, like, for stuff, um, like, motion, right? Mm-hmm. Like, let's say, I'm a bad example because I don't think there's any POV stuff in, in this movie but like uh, the first thing I thought of was like in Star Wars when they go when they hit warp drive right and it's like just blasting through okay. like you'd be, imagine like the whole movie scene like the walls oh, too are blasting through I can, yeah. see, I can see that could be fun for that type of movie yeah um, I didn't really enjoy it I, I hated it yeah because a lot of time like I didn't know it was AI so I thought they were like extending the movie a bit yeah so I was going like this, looking at it, but I'm missing what's going on on the main screen. Yeah. Mm. And I just, like, and also we were in a bad position for it. We were, we were right in front of the screen. Okay. I feel like if you're further back, middle, or in sense. the back of the theater, it's better, you know? Okay. I don't remember this movie. Was it the entire length of the movie had the size? Yeah, so it kind of tapers off as you go, cause, because the, the way a theater's constructed, right, it's at an angle. Yeah. So it, it kind of just tapers off into a triangle, into the corner. Yeah, of the but movie the, it theater. never turned off during the movie. I did a couple times. Yeah. I think when it's dark, it'll turn. Or is it, if I saw off, pretty much. The Creator. That's okay, a good yeah. movie. I, I saw really that on Screen X cool. also. Oh, okay. And that was only the action scenes had the walls filled. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Every other like dialogue scene yeah. was just that, and it would blow up, then go back, then blow yeah. up. So it's kind of weird there. Mm. I liked it in this one. I don't know if I was like, you know, introduced to it, and I was already kind of used to it out of the movie. Yeah. But I didn't have, find a problem with it at all because I didn't like it the first time. But here I had no issue. With I think once I once I got used to it halfway through the movie, I just like once you, if you just ignore it, mm-hmm. it's perfectly fine. So I, my least favorite part, as to one of the points you just made about immersion is that it kept bringing me out of the movie because the theater is so bright because mm-hmm. the walls are screen also okay. yeah. that it, it's a lot brighter than usual. So like, even though they dim the lights or turn them off for the movie, all of a sudden the walls are glowing. So it's like, I could just, I can see them in the theater. And all I could, like, it's just, I could see the benches and everything too much. I Interesting. Found. So that brought me out of the movie. I kept reminding me, oh, fuck, I'm... So do you guys Sitting find? So you guys find it was like a gimmick kind of just a kept. I thought it was pretty gimmicky. I'm not okay, gimmicky. Yeah. yeah. No, no, like, I, I didn't mind it the second time. Oh yeah. If you're close enough, I think maybe to the screen and it's really more peripheral. I, I, I think, think you, I think like, you got to be further. Mm. No, but I don't because when I saw the creator, it was pretty like middle, okay. and it was like Lee was saying, you see the whole theater, so you just okay. see people's heads and stuff. Mm. But yeah. I don't know if you need to be like really right up to it and then, oh, and then it's blowing. I still, I still rather Ultra AVX at Cineplex. Well, it is. I think the the screen X. Theaters have is, is Ultra is AVX? also oh, okay. Okay. yeah I think so okay. yeah I think I think for sure if you're gonna because it costs extra too right. I think if you're gonna spend the extra money just go to IMAX okay yeah well that's what because that wasn't weren't they saying that IMAX is the way you should watch this movie I don't know that's I don't probably know. that's what they say the way, yeah that's, that's what they say about every blockbuster now just to make you spend more money on movie tickets yeah that's true good point you know. But yeah. yeah, to me, I think all, all that stuff is just go. Did you guys buy a popcorn bucket? You guys no. buy I got popcorn. I got popcorn. No, but no, there was, there was no, there's no Dune oh, thing. Bucket. The Dune bucket. No. Your companion. Was it? Was the, Did they have the Dune over there? They did. No. I don't think they had it. No. It might have just been a premiere thing. It's possible. Uh, Very possible. Okay. Yeah. Too bad. I'm sure it was like limited bad. edition premiere only. Maybe I don't know. I didn't. We didn't get one though. I know. I didn't see anyone with one. No, I mean, Lee kind of just did like this. Is that some Colossus? Yeah, we went to, yeah, oh, Colossus, right. yeah. Right, we always go to Colossus. Yeah. <clears throat> we always go to Colossus. My favorite, my favorite movie theater on Montreal. I so like nice. the Forum. And the Forum, too. I like but, the Forum. Have you tried the VIP experience? Now we're just going to go on a Cineplex tangent, but have you tried the VIP experience? <laughs> no, I haven't. That should be dope, dude. Oh, it's that, right. That's a date thing, though. I don't, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah, have yeah. a date, it's, you know? Every, every seat in the cinema is a, is a full oh. Lazy Boy recliner. Okay. Yeah, actually. Single seat? like yeah. Doubles. Doubles. Okay, Doubles, yeah. you can cuddle with your girl. Yeah, but there's also a... An arm. You can put an armrest yeah. down if you're... Even smaller, even smaller tangent, uh, in my hometown, the local cinema 
actually just has reclining seats. They're so tiny. The Cineplex oh, bought the the small cinema. Yeah. But it's so it's so small that they're like, eh. All the all the all the rooms have them. So even just the normal non VIP, you just sit there and you're like, that's there's it. there's like five. Also rooms. also yeah. I think in That's VIP cool. you can get shit like. Delivered, yeah, delivered. Yeah. Yeah, well, so before the movie, though. Table service. Oh, before, yeah. But before yeah. the movie. Okay. Before, oh, yeah. Okay. During ads, yeah. so you can drink, you can eat. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. But that, see, that's the thing, dude. Like, mm-hmm. right before the movie starts, you just order sick beers. <laughs> or, what I did, I just ordered a full pitcher of beer. Oh, that's cool. And I just, okay. the whole movie, did just fucking... Just fall asleep. Pounding <laughs> beers. <laughs> and but I, I will say the food is disgusting. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's like dinner food? It's not like popcorn? No, it's like, no, it's like pizza, tacos, wings. It's like pub food. But not. Well, I can't. I can't not just get like a bunch okay. of popcorn delivered to my my you sofa. You can also get snacks. Yes, you can get whatever you want. There's also a bar with a pool table, so you show up early, you hang out. That's pretty funny. It's kind of um, like when you had parties at the theater yeah. with kids, and you would hang out in the yeah, arcade. Yeah, but for adults. Yeah. Nice. Um, that I will say, I think is worth the extra price. It's, yeah, it's I mean, a fun yeah. experience. Well, yeah. The beer is no more expensive than a bar, anyways. No. So mm-hmm. like, if you're gonna go hang out at a bar before a movie and have a couple beers, you sure. may as well just do the VIP. What's the price drop though? I think it was the same price as Screen X. Screen X was pretty expensive, I found. Yeah, what was it, like 25 bucks? 10 bucks more than a regular ticket. Yeah, yeah it was pretty expensive. Yeah. I think VIP is the same thing, 10 bucks more. Okay. For just that, I thought it was... Uh, kind Me of too. Like, That's yeah. why I don't think I'll do it. Actually, I saw, I saw House of Gucci, of all movies. I saw House of Gucci VIP. Yeah. And I had a good time. You know, we got good drinks. Yeah. We, you know, had... Yeah. yeah, it was nice. I saw Poor Things Ooh. VIP. That was a good cool. Thing. That was a good time. It was nice. Yeah. But Dune... <clears throat> Back to our no reclining events. seats on Arrakis, dude. No, <laughs> no. Um, I'm I I. So once Dune two ended, I was like, I definitely enjoyed it more than the first one. I, that's well, I mean, I like both, but yeah, that that was. But I I because I, I found the first one was pretty much two hours of very little happening. Hmm. It was like it was pretty much two hours of just prologue. But Dune. Part two, to me, felt like two hours of way too much happening. The first half of the movie mm-hmm. is what I would call like the protagonist training arc, where it's just like him learning the ways of the Fremen. Mm-hmm. But it was too fast for me. It was like achievement after achievement after achievement. Like I never got to care that Paul Atreides was becoming one with the Fremen. Because it, it just happened so quick, I just stopped caring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you didn't feel the struggle or the time. Yeah. yeah. And it, it felt like he, he rode he, he rode the sandworm, which was like, I guess, the last test to become a Fremen. It might have been like after an hour of the movie, but it felt like 10 minutes because everything happened so fucking quick. So what's interesting about that is that in the book, uh, they spend three years in the South. Right. In the South. Yeah. Past the storm. Yeah. Here's another thing. This is one of the notes I took. I remember taking it. Everyone's like, oh, the south. No one can get to the south. There's a giant sandstorm. I'm sorry. Everyone gets to this planet via fucking spaceship. Just land in the south. Yeah. It's, That's uh, pretty funny. Yeah, 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 true, true. There's, a, there's a strip of, of storm separate on the equator. Just go, just go, uh, you can argue. You land on the other side. Okay, but if we're going into semantics, you can argue that even the south is just unlandable. Maybe they don't explain it, but perhaps all the ports, all the... Maybe. Everything is set up there. Well, the reason they give in the movie is that everyone just says, oh, well, no one lives in the South. It's right. uninhabitable. That's, it's uninhabitable. Yeah. They, they keep saying it's uninhabitable. But the Atreides knew it was inhabitable because they sent Poseidon, not Poseidon, Aquaman, mm-hmm. whatever his fucking Duncan name. Idaho. Duncan Idaho. Duncan Idaho. Duncan Idaho. They sent Duncan Idaho Not to confuse there. him with his cousin, John Delaware. All right, so... Shut <laughs> the fuck <laughs> up, dude. But they send Duncan Idaho down south, and he finds the Fremen. So my question is, why didn't the Atreides just fucking land in the south? Because, but before, like, Duncan Idaho was, like, the test to go see if there were people actually there. Yeah. Before he actually went and figured it out, everyone thought there was no Fremen, Fremen down there at all. But when, but they send Duncan Idaho before Paul and his dad and stuff land. And, like, they oh. knew already... That his mission in the south was successful and he found millions of Fremen down there. Oh, I, I forgot. It's so like, why didn't they just, like, obviously send people to land in the capital so you can start harvesting spice. But then also, why don't you just fucking land a spaceship down there? Send Paul uh, there right uh, away uh, if you think he's the fucking messiah. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies I find, uh, especially you, with the second one. Do you think in the movie, uh, both in the book and the movie, or do you think that it's just inconsistent in the movie? Because you movies, read... In the movies, in the movies, okay. in the movies. 
In the book, this is all explained. But how, like, how like, just for someone who hasn't, like, read those parts, how is that explained? I don't remember. Okay. Oh. But it's, it's not important. Okay, like, it's, it's just not, not important. important. Okay. <clears throat> the other note I wrote down, in relation to this of just shit not making sense to me, or, or things being stupid the more I think about them, mm-hmm. uh, them getting off the worms. Mm. Yeah. They just, they just jump off. How do those things are going so fast? How do you just jump off? I don't fucking know, bro. <laughs> so I googled it because I was it was bothering me, <laughs> and I someone said in the book they explain it, and apparently in the books they just wait for the worm to slow down, and, then, the and worm, then they jump off. The worm just gets tired and just they just jump off. Yeah, once it stops. Yeah, yeah. It's like fuck, what you wait for days? You wait for how long does a worm <laughs> move for? <laughs> no, it, 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 it's like in the book, it's like you're just at the disposal of this fucking worm, you know? No, because they can, hop they on, can you're like fuck. Well, I guess I'm going where the fuck he wants me. No, because they can control where the worm goes. Sure, but they can't control when he stops. So let's say you're trying to get home. You're like, all right, well, home is this way. Yeah. You point the worm that way, but then what if the worm doesn't want to stop once you get home? You just fucking circle back over and over again until he stops. Just circles. <laughs> you just keep going, dude. Stupid. Yeah, I don't know. I don't so, say. I don't. That's that's another thing in the book. I just you know they don't. It's not like um. It's not like a very like you know like a lot of fantasy books. They kind of go very deep into every mm-hmm. little thing. Yeah. They don't really do that. Yeah. That. No. Like I mean, they do it, but they don't do it like that. Yeah. Like fantasy, where they just explain the whole anatomy of the worm and everything. Blah blah blah. I mean, they do a bit in the books. Like they have an explanation for like the the chem the chemistry of the spice and all that yeah, stuff yeah. there. But like, well, I, that's <clears throat> sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say. I saw also a physicist analyze how the worms move because they don't slither like snakes and they don't burrow like yeah. real worms because they can just kind of glide on the surface. Yeah. And he he did the math and everything and he found that the only the only way he can conceptualize the worms can propel themselves is by shitting out sand out the other end <laughs> so hard that they just get fucking long, like a jet plane. They just <laughs> inhale sand and shit it out. At the speed they it's want. It's not impossible. Out. It's not impossible. I just think it's dumb. It's the power but, of spice. <laughs> it's crazy. But remember, this is a this is a sci-fi. It's not but supposed guess, to be well, real. So, so that's yeah, because like, yeah. if it's not explained in the book, I think both the book and the movie, despite its differences, I think it succeeds in exploring the themes that the book. It does not. You don't think so? It does not. So okay, <clears throat> why not? Do you themes? Are we talking environmental themes, or are we talking like all the, the themes? Well, well, the the. Excuse me, if I, my cat is being is uh, my cat's on one today. Like fuck off, Julia. Because I think no. So the the themes of the book yeah, go for it. are very like um, it's a, a lot of it's about governmental structures, uh, political structures. Um, uh, like uh, the 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 main big theme of the book is that you shouldn't trust charismatic leaders. That's like the whole yeah. point of the whole book. Yeah. That no matter how good they are, how no matter how much you like a politician. No matter what, they could be the best guy ever. Eventually, they will not be. Mm. Doesn't matter. Does, power does, corrupts. Power corrupts all the time. Um, but it's 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 not really about the power corrupts part. It's more about uh, the people following them, and how and how like, a, and a lot of like another big theme of the book is is about weaponizing religion. Yeah, that's a huge part of it. Yeah, mm. uh, and those are kind of the the main main themes. And every everything in the book is kind of geared toward, kind of like. Um, Touching on these themes all the time, right? Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, why why is that? Why why was I? Oh, you that? were saying so. You were saying that it does not succeed in the movie. Yeah, it doesn't succeed in the movie. Well, I say it does. I agree with Les. Um, because like it does, but they change certain parts of the plot where it's really a lot more diminished than in the book. Mm. Like for example, um, you know how they have to go like kind of convince all the Fremen. To follow their new uh, Paul Atreides uh, cult. Yeah, yeah. In the book, that's not a that's not really a thing, at all. Mm. In the book, um, how how it works is that the Benny Gesserit, the the women behind the scenes, they implanted that prophecy into the Fremen people, like years before the, the events of the book. Yeah. And and there, in the book, there's no there's no North or South Fremen people. Like the North people don't believe in it, and the South people do. There's none of that in the book. They all they all believe in this in the book. Oh, uh, okay. Um. Another big thing too is like my, my my biggest gripe with the movie, my biggest the change that pissed me off the most is um, Chani, uh, okay. what's her face? Zendaya. Zendaya's character. That's what I was just about to ask because of what you just said. You know how at the end she's all pissed at him and she's like always like has this like pissy mood towards him. Yeah. In the book, bro, she's ride or die. 
Yeah. She goes with everything he does. Like, mm. like, he, like you know when she gets jealous at the end that he's like, oh, I'm going to take the hand of the em- universe emperor, you know, and she's all jelly and she runs out of the room? Yeah. Doesn't happen in the book. In well, the book, she's ride or die. She understands that he's doing that for politics. Yeah. She understands all that yeah. shit, you know? And correct me if I'm wrong, but in the books, he takes the hand of the empress yeah. to become emperor. Yeah. But then... Still has his children with Channing. Yes, and that's one thing. Yes, that that's, next, that's the next book. That's that, the next. Yeah, book. yeah. Right. Okay. So, so, so that was my thing too. Channing's character, I found interesting, and the dynamic between her and Paul, I found interesting, because mm-hmm. have you guys ever seen Austin Powers? Yeah, yeah. Of course. You know the bit. Uh, Will Ferrell, his character in Austin Powers. Uh, the yeah, the, the, the Mustafa. Mustafa. Yeah, the Mustafa, yeah. and like his whole shtick is like. They're torturing him, torturing him. They're interrogating to find out where Doctor Evil is, mm-hmm. and his whole shtick is that he can't stand being asked the same question three times. So he just says, "So Austin awesome Powers just asks him the same question three times, and then he just gives him the answer." Like, don't have to torture <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. <laughs> That's to me. Chani felt like that. Oh no, sorry, Paul felt like that to me because it was like mm. they were like, "Paul, you need to go south," and he's like, "No, I can't. I'm gonna kill everyone if I do that." And they're like, "Okay, yeah, okay." You should go south though. And he's like, "No, I can't. I'll kill everyone." And they're like, "No, but you should really go south though." And he's like, "Fuck, yeah." God damn! I should go south. Uh, uh, another <laughs> another book is consistency. The dreams he has are not of killing Fremen people; they're of killing people in the whole universe. So that's, that's I think I mm, see, I think they do mention it. They I do mention they it. That, yeah. yeah, they but do his, mention. But it. his dreamscape is 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 on is, Arrakis, is on Arrakis. Yeah. because yeah. that's what he's familiar with right now. And again, yeah. I think there's a lot of themes that in the book. The reason why I'm saying that they succeed in exploring the themes in the movie just as much as the themes are very present in the book. Is that you only, unfortunately, you do only have about three hours max to where people are going to watch it. True, them, true. Right? Like it's, so you kind of have to make it a little faster. Yeah. And I think the change in characterization for Shani, Chani, sorry, is, but let's be honest, in the real world, right, if it's a little, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to set up the idea that there's going to be conflict They're, they're trying between, to foreshadow Paul's downfall. Exactly. That's what they're, doing. they're trying to foreshadow it immediately. Because Which is actually people, something I liked in the movie. Well, that's that's the thing. So that's yeah. why I'm. I, that's why I say that the themes are very much prevalent and present, and they work well it, within a two-hour, forty-five-minute film, mm-hmm. where you know you have Paul becoming much more charismatic than in the first movie, which I appreciated immediately. The characters are much more um, like to your point, where the dialogue is less uh, operatic. Mm-hmm. It's much more realistic. So to me, that that whole thing brings more. Um, you know, brings more personality to these characters that look much more mythological sure, in yeah. the first one. They're more human. They're, so. they're much more humanized, completely. And the relationship with Shani, between Shani and um, Paul. Uh, Paul is is much more realistic than in the first one. They're like they're very other otherworldly, ethereal be- like beings. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what I find too is like that that switch in the th- last uh, the, the third the last third of the movie, where Paul just switches into kind of like I'm going to start kind of influencing the Fremen a little more. I'm going to use the power that I now have that I'm now aware of. Mm-hmm. I think that was very well done to showcase that at any point, to Lee's point, any point the power can corrupt at any point. And it's subtle because you can tell the way the cinema, the way, sorry, not the cinema, the way the uh, the, the the sets were shot, the way the thing was shot in that scene where the Emperor dies and the Har- and Baron Harkonnen tries to gr- gr- uh, grasp the chair... Yeah, that was cool. You can yeah. immediately tell the physicality of of Chalamet. All of a sudden, I even felt like there was a weight that was just like he was the twink at all. You know? Oh no! All of a sudden, normally he's a twink. You know? <laughs> no, but like all of a sudden, I genuinely felt like I don't. This guy irks me so, for some reason. Yeah. For some reason, well, I know that he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, but I can't well, it's not, it's pinpoint not that, why. So, so it's not that he's a wolf in sheep's clothing. It's not no. that power corrupts him either. No, because but... end of the story. He's not the one that with all the power, and he knows no, it too. No, 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 I know that. And and the thing is, it's like when when he goes on his like spoilers. Uh, if you haven't read the second book, Messiah, he goes on a jihad over the whole universe. Right. He kills so many people. Okay. But he doesn't do it because he has power and he wants to be powerful. He does it in order to free Arrakis and free the Fremen people. That's what he does it for, right? It's more his son. Let spoilers. Up. That that uh, that becomes like the real the real fucking tyrant here, you know. But he like, turns into a worm. He turns into a god, the god the god worm the emperor god of the universe, yeah. the god emperor worm of the universe. And guy. that's where and that's where I'm I can't worried wait for that dude. Well, that's that's the thing. It's like 
<laughs> I'll be honest, I'm very cynical about the Dune franchise just because of the how the actual books play out. How goofy it gets? No. It's general, not goofy. It's not goofy. <laughs> okay, look, it's, 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 it's great. It's awesome as a book. But I'm telling you right now, general audiences no, no, this is, want to see this. It's so not general audience. Like, like it's here, not. It's here, not. Here's thing, right? Like, I was telling Lee the other day, I was like, they shouldn't have done movies for the Dune, book, Dune books. They should do a Animated fucking... films? No, like HBO series. Interesting. Of like eight seasons long. That's what they need to do. Because <laughs> like even Thrones. even in these in, even in this in, in the movies, like they're they're missing stuff. They're not doing all of it. Like and and if you thought these movies had a lot of shit and it's dense, <laughs> Julia, shut the fuck up. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> yeah. If you thought if you thought these movies had a lot of shit and a lot yeah. of dense and a lot of story, dude, the fucking second book. Messiah is like, there's way more shit that happens in this fucking book. Like, it's way more dense. Okay, so, like, very small tangent here. Game of Thrones, the way it ended, I found that it was the same way in which Paul's switch up. Like, there is always, there's always been, by the way, foreshadowing. But he never switched up. He was always going to do this plan. No, but he only does this plan because it is said by the Bene Gesserit and Nisan al Gaib and all that. And it's like, Uh, no, no, no. That that change you're talking about that you noticed. Yeah, the, like the, on the, the throne in the throne room. Oh yeah, I noticed it in the nuke room when he finds out that they have access to his family's yes. nuclear weapons. Yeah, to me that's when he. Oh yeah, no, no, like I've noticed like there was like always those, those little like moments where I'm like, oh, what's he thinking now? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think but, once Paul realized that he could, he, he that he had that atomic leverage. Yeah, that's when the next time someone said, "Hey, why don't you go south?" He was like, "Yeah, let's go south. I'm a, I'm a nuke these guys." <laughs> But still, like, even with the nukes, he doesn't do it for power. He doesn't, because he wants to free the people. Like, actually, yeah. in the book, he wants to do it free people, you know? But won't nuking their planet not free them? Won't that turn them into mutants? What? Uh, like, nuking Arrakis? Nuking the planet, yeah. Well, he doesn't just nuke Arrakis. He nukes, like, almost the whole fucking universe. Oh, there's enough nukes to nuke the whole universe. Yeah. Apparently. But yeah. he does nuke Arrakis. Not really, like... No, well, he, in the movie, he straight up did. You see it happen. I don't... Yeah. That's how it ends, with him nuking Arrakis. Yeah. Well, no, it ends with the fucking, um... Him killing the emperor and, and taking over his fucking thing and all the all the other like space um, space houses kind of like refuting his leadership. Yeah, then they nuke Arrakis. The, the, the last scene is him like standing in that big window and there's just nukes and there's a huge explosion. Really? Yeah, that's the what the fuck did I just like? Was I just not paying attention? No, no, there was literally like a mushroom and it was just yeah. like, a cloud of Arrakis. He nukes Arrakis. Yeah, yeah, at the he end nukes. Of- Dune part two. He doesn't take out. He doesn't take out Arrakis and completely. I don't know That's if that was a sure. dream. I don't know They're if that. I think, I think. I think that might think, have been his dreams. That might no, have been no, at the very end. Am I tripping? I think I remember. So no, no, no. There that. is that scene. There is that scene. But yeah. is that real? I don't know. Yes, because there, there. It's not him dreaming. It's not one of his visions. That happens. When they're in the, the when they're in the like capital, they're both watching it. Yes. Together. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's what he's talking. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. They straight up nuke. That's yeah. the whole plan. He's like, you guys come in from the south. I'll come in from the north, and then we'll hit him from the east and the west, and we'll surround him, and then I'll fight Elvis, and then I'll nuke the planet, and then <laughs> the plan exactly happens. Oh, but like he, doesn't, that. he doesn't take out the whole planet though. No. No, but he nu- he nukes the spice fields. Yeah, the spice fields. It's different. It's different. But then because the, the, the reason why. Yeah. Sorry to cut you off. The reason why it's important for me to. Say that he doesn't nuke the whole planet is because later on, uh, his son uh, completely terraforms the whole planet, and right. spice is no longer a thing. So, but yeah, and spice is how they space travel. Yes. So how is how is Paul Atreides going to conquer the the Galactic Empire if he nukes his own spice? Well, because he only nuked that planet, bro. It's a massive planet. You know, he still has the spice to okay. go take out the take out everyone else. You know. All right. Okay. But the planet gets terraformed like thousands of years after the yes. thought of this. Well, yeah, because that's the thing. Because um, his son, Leto, Leto the second, he yeah. becomes the emperor for like three thousand years or something stupid like 10, that. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, ten thousand. This story only works as a book. I think it yeah, does. It, it, it really like like the thing yeah. is like like I was telling Lee the other day is that like I actually prefer the first one. Well, I think mm-hmm. Denis Villeneuve said. Sorry to cut you off. Yeah, yeah go I think Denis Villeneuve said that he'll do Messiah mm-hmm. if they let him. But I think he said that's it. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, even then, it's like, how is that it? That's it. I come on. That's maybe not he just to means that's that's all he has planned now. That's well, not... it's all he has planned now for sure. Like the, it, it's too dense. It's too much. But for how, him to write how are you gonna film? Wait, well, you mean Messiah is it, or you mean Part Two was it? So far, Part Two is it. They have not greenlit. Messiah. How do you finish? What? That's not a finish. To... No, he he ending. started he started writing uh, Messiah though. Okay, thank God, because that's not an ending to anything. But no one's funded. Like no one's 
Okay, no one's no greenlit one's, the project yet. They, they, for will. Sure they will. They will. For sure they will. Um, okay, look, unless Warner Brothers gets sold to Universal, no one, like, it yeah, hopefully yeah. will. No, for sure, for sure. Yeah. For sure, it's, bro, yeah. it's, the movie's already, like, tripled its budget in, in, in profit. 500 right? million it crossed. Yeah, they only spent 200 million to make the movie. Really? Yep. Wow, that was a pretty solid. Only. Actually, actually, a big... Only. Only. No, only. but, no, but a, lot, a lot of things is, like, a lot of people are crediting Denis Villeneuve with this, is that, like, he's showing all these other studios they don't have to spend a hot, like, like, Six seven hundred million dollars, uh, a billion dollars on a movie. Like you yeah, can do was, it. What was the la- what was the what was the end game's budget for for the budget for like the million. how big this movie is? The budget is like not three hundred big. Three hundred, I think. I'm so they spent yeah three hundred million dollars more. Yeah, you're right. They spent a hundred million dollars more on end game. On end game and but that crossed but effects, that but um, end game crossed two billion dollars. Yeah. And I think also, I think also, <laughs> just star power alone. Well, yeah, they that, probably, that's a large lot of part animators of it. they have to pay to make yeah. something. Like yeah, that. for you sure. You don't need that many animators for sure. Because all of Dune was made in that in that weird room, right? Where it's all just projections. It's oh, all yeah. just yes, it's all TV. Yeah, it's all the yeah. TV yeah. stuff now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. it's that I new tech that. they use for Mandalorian. Okay, it's yeah. all. Um, I think that's what they did too. Yeah, Dune as well. Cool. Basically, it's a throwback to like the fifties and sixties and forties, where they would just like put screens in the back of actors and they would drive a car and hey, touch. You know, it's like. But now it's cool and better. Yeah, and it was cool. good. Yeah. 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 But, um... But yes. Wow. What were you going to say? I was going to go back a bit, backtrack a tiny bit, because I think when I... I haven't read the books. Yeah. But when I... When I when we finish Dune 2, thinking about Dune... The thing is, I think Dune... Whatever. There were one movie, right? But when I when we finished Dune Part 2, I was trying to think thematically. Yeah. And all... All the themes they might work more effectively in the book. But Way I more. Still Way think more. they're effective in the movie because once the movie finished, I still identified three strong themes. Mm. The first being uh, government corrupting religion. Yep. The second being uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Yep, sure. And the third being environmentalism. And the spice mm. being a metaphor for oil and all that stuff. But you see, those last two are not themes in the book. Really, like environmentalism is not a theme in the book. Really. Are you sure? It isn't it? Yeah. I, no, I think Frank Herbert was pretty adamant on yes, it is. You think so? I'm, was, ju- I'm, I'm honestly convinced he a, that he huge, spoke about this. I think he was a huge advocate against the war in the Middle East and the oil. Oh yeah, for sure, thing. for sure. But like, it's kind of like a side that like it's really more about government structures and stuff. Like, like also, that. first of all, what's it, the, the the something jihad? What's it? What's it the called? jihad? The, but what's the name of it? In the in Dune, in the book, the book, yeah, it's the bull, bull, not the bull, Shabek. Oh, the 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 uh, Butlerian Jihad. But the Butlerian Jihad. But that happens before the. Well, I know, it's ten thousand years prior. But 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 the whole point is, you can tell that Frank Herbert is against the idea of technology going way too far. He oh, wants yeah, yeah, to go yeah, back yeah, yeah. to this That's whole sure. idea yeah. of humanity for humanity's sake. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, there sure, are no sure. robots in Dune, which is such a unique twist on sci-fi. Yeah. So so you guys oh, don't know yeah. the Butlerian Jihad. Yeah. Is, oh, yeah yeah yeah. So yeah. Uh, like ten thousand years before yeah. the series, the, the the Dune movies, um, the like the Terminator. The, it was like Terminator. Yeah. yeah. But what happened is that it got so bad that they just kind of wiped out computers entirely, and there's like zero computers. Like there's zero zero computers. Yeah. There's zero calculate. Like that's why you have like those guys called the Mentats. You know, like they have like these human computers that there's just like basically right. these fucking nerds that just calculate all day. Yeah. Like in the first one, it was that it was that. Seven. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> They have, they have the they have the the guy in the first one. Uh, yeah, with the eyes twitching going up. The eyes twitching going up. Oh yeah, uh, I liked him. Yeah, you know what's you know what's actually crazy is that that's another um, like uh, problem with the 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 second movie is that he's not in it. He plays a big role in the second part of the book. He's in the second dude. He's there for one scene. We just find out he's not dead yet. Yeah, but he plays a massive part. Like he's like an important okay. character in the second part. I also heard um, Duncan Idaho comes back like seventeen mm-hmm. times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he gets like cloned and shit right. a lot. You know, that's yeah. Well, yeah, but this yeah. is too much. All this is just yeah, too it's a much. lot. Eh? Well, it's yeah, more it's heavy. Too that's much. the thing is that that and that's <laughs> what I think didn't even know for a lot of people. Like reading some of the reviews, some people actually love it. Some people actually genuinely just don't like the movie for its adaptation sake, not for the technical aspect. Technical aspect, and everyone agrees it's great, but for the. Um, but like for the adaptation, I think at a certain point you have to give it credit. He's trying to adapt a very lore heavy, theme heavy, honestly dense, surreal, dense, dense, info dense, dense info dense. Yeah, but and, Peter Jackson did it with Lord of the Rings. Yes, but is it surreal to the point where like your son becomes a worm? Mm. You know, like Lord of the Rings? 
That's close enough. Uh, That's pretty no, awful. no, it's like Dune. The Dune books are way more dry and academic than, than yeah. the Lord of yes. the Rings trilogy. Yes. That's true. Could you, like, can you stop fucking knocking over the tripod? Fuck off. Go, go. They're they're way more. It's way more of like um high highbrow, like literature. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like difference between literature, like. No, Bro, are you calling Lord of the Rings not? Literature? No, it no, is. It, is, <laughs> it is, but but Lord of the Rings is not like um, it's 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 literature because it's so good and it influenced so much. It's like the first, you know. But it's not like like it doesn't like like Lord of the Rings doesn't allude so much to the canon of English literature. Yes, it does. It absolutely does. That's like ninety percent of what it does. Really, Lord of the Rings is like a testament to philology and history. Okay, All well, of I didn't read the fucking book. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Lord of the Rings is yeah, not fucking yeah. referencing Let's like uh, yeah, Paradise yeah, yeah, Lost yeah, yeah, yeah. and fucking Moby Dick over here. No, it's it's referencing older stuff. Beowulf, Alexander the not Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great. No, Alexander, no. Um, Ulysses, uh, the Odyssey. Okay, so the uh, King Alfred, like ancient old English texts. Calibre. Okay, but that's not and Greek mythology and Spanish all the things mythology. that made. But that's not English, English. literature canon. It is. It, it is. absolutely is. But it's not, it's not, it's not part of like this, like, um, it's ancient English. Okay, ancient here's, English. Here's, I'm talking about like, like wizard lib, like Frank liberal Herbert's arts American. kind of, um, Frank Herbert's American. Frank Herbert is referencing a lot of American literature. Literature, yeah. Sure. Oh, okay. And, yeah. and, we'll, and we'll Tolkien, say that, yeah. Tolkien is, is old English. Old, old English. English. Yeah. Yeah. It's very different. Text, it's very different. Very different. Very different worldview. Anglo-Saxon. Yeah. Anglo-Saxon. Very different. Yeah. Very different, v- very different way. But of... I, didn't, I didn't read Lord of the Rings, so I don't know what I'm talking oh, about. Man, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. But the but, books, the movies are so fucking good. And know? so, like, when you talk about themes yeah. and stuff, what I think, and that's the thing too, is I just genuinely think I enjoyed this movie much more just for its spectacle aspects of it. I mean, both movies are really pretty to look at, every frame of painting. But the spectacle of like just watching this was really cool. Um, but what I loved the most, and what I wanted to get to know more, is just the Bene Gesserit. Before you dive into that, can I yeah. can I say one more thing about literature? Go ahead. Yes. I think the distinguishing thing, the difference between Lord of the Rings and Dune, with the, yeah. with the thing we're talking about, is that like you can enjoy the Lord of the Rings books without reading that Anglo-Saxon shit. Yes. You know, you can't really enjoy Dune, or like you can't really enjoy like a Cormac McCarthy book if you haven't read all the other shit that came before that influenced. The English literature canon sure. in America. Yeah, no one. That's what it, you mentioned. I, Paradise Lost. No one's reading Paradise Lost and liking it if they don't know anything about right. the Bible. Yeah, and you're not you're not reading Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy if you haven't read fucking Paradise Lost. Like you're not going to get the whole anything in the book. Right. It's I different. Think you can still enjoy something. Can enjoy yes. it, but like yeah. you're not going to get anywhere near the full experience of like. The, but here's the, a question the, the for you. So, right? do you think that it's beneficial for any art that you're consuming or watching or viewing or looking at or reading? Do you think that you need context in order to enjoy or watch or understand? You or? don't need it, but like does it, it heighten definitely, the experience then? It does for okay. sure, for sure, for sure. I, like, I would agree with like that. if you, if you, I guarantee you, like let's say I read Lord of the Rings. Yeah, at least definitely probably you need Lord of the Rings. to. You need to read Lord of the yeah, Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come down. But let's say I read it <laughs> yeah, and Lee read it. Read yeah. it. Lee is gonna enjoy the Lord of the Rings books way more than I if he read the Anglo-Saxon yeah. canon. Yeah. Then I like I'll probably still really enjoy it. Cause it's fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's so good. Well, yeah. But I, I'll probably won't. I won't see the references. I won't be yeah. like, oh shit, that's cool. You know, like I won't get that. Yeah. Either. But I, I don't to think you... spin a well to spin a modern lens on it, it's like someone giving giving someone who likes reading but doesn't like literature, giving them Ulysses versus giving them a Farewell to Arms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Huge difference. Right? It's 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 general fiction versus. Literature, two, yeah, two different but things. You know? That's why that's why I use Farewell to Arms because Hemingway is still literature. Just yeah, like it is. Dune it is. and Lord of the Rings, the two are comparing. They're both still literature. Yeah, just it's a very different uh, experience. Enjoy, it. but like I said, like Dune is very academic. It's very dry. It's very like you can't really enjoy it unless you're like understanding the themes and all sort of stuff. Like you could probably enjoy it a little bit. Like Chris read all the Dune books, but he did audiobook kind of thing. That's a great word to use. Academic. It's very sterile. The, the, compared the to Lord of the Rings, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. so it's so clinically written. Yeah. Compared to where Lord of the Rings is very mythological, it it fall it really hones in on the idea of fantasy, of yeah. friendship, of love, it's of, epic, it's an adventure, epic, it's tale, you know? tale, something yeah. you can tell your children. Dune yeah. is like the well, the book, yes, it's uh, the yeah, Valerian it's Jihad true. happened ten thousand years ago. It's like actually it's a history book. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's 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 yeah, like it's cool. like you ever read Game of Thrones? <laughs> no. Okay, Game of Thrones is written the, very similar to, to Dune. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. yeah, like, yeah, like Game cool. of Thrones is very history book, textbook kind okay. of like thing, but it's amazing. Okay. Yeah. But the writing style is totally... It's not yeah. like this... Uh, like this. Um, 
No, this kind of like a free flowing story, yeah, you know, yeah. this like, streamlined story, you know, it's not Dune, like that. Dune's the type of shit that you gotta actually reference the appendix every three pages. Yes, pretty much. But Lord of the Rings, if you never reference the no, appendix, you'll You're be fine. okay. Yeah, Tom okay, Bombadil yeah. shows up. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Tom. You read like, it, you're like, that was cute, move on. <laughs> But if yeah. you read the appendix, you're like, dude, Tom Bombadil, the fucking like, go. like, 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 Dune, Dune, the Dune books are very like, uh, it's the only sci-fi like, not like novel that's very lib arts, if you know what I mean, liter kind of literature, you okay. know, mm. you know what I mean? I do, yeah, yeah. It's 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 the only sci-fi that's like really like that. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of great sci-fi literature, yeah, but that's the only one that's like in that kind of style, like yeah. Madame Bovary kind of shit, you know? Yeah. What about what, Gene Wolfe? Don't know. Wolf. That's a good. Sounds like a nightmare to read. It's it's amazing. Is it really? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not fun at it's all. It's fucking dude. amazing. Okay. But you know you know it's 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 like any other like really long fucking piece of literature. So right? that, that's why they say it's impossible. That's why they say it's unadaptable. It's yeah. unadaptable because it's long. It's dense as shit. Like each movie, like if they made movies of it, I would say they need minimum two like three movies per fucking book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, like you were saying before, I think there was a miniseries of Dune. Dude, there was. Of Dune. There's some, yeah. And that one mm -hmm. is super fucking faithful. That one's like the best one out of all of them. And oh, it's the yeah. same story? Yeah, yeah. But that one's Messiah. Oh, they oh, only okay. did Messiah. They only did Messiah. They That's only did weird. Leto and, and shit. Uh, did yeah. you see that? I did not, but I heard it's very, very fucking good. Mm, okay. Like, I heard it's the best, the most faithful out of all everything that, uh, any Dune adaptation by yeah. far. But that's, that's, so that's again to the point where you're saying that it's very clinical, it's very sterile, it's very academic in nature. Creating movies, movies need to be... They're not. What? They're not clinical, academic. And no, like Dune. Dune. No, no, I'm saying the movies in general no, are they're, not. they're not. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Dune movies are not. So it's... And, but, but that's the challenge is that you're trying to make a movie. It's not just a textbook. You're yeah. trying to entertain while simultaneously yeah. telling a story, while simultaneously exploring themes and building characters. And I think that's where the movie succeeds in adapting a clinical textbook. My thing story. is that a, the changes they make in the movie are pissing you off. It's not that they piss me off. They do piss me off. But it's, right. it's that they're not, they don't change the experience of that movie at all if you change them. Like they they okay. make it worse in my opinion. Okay. Do you think do you think a mockumentary style movie like District Nine would bode well to adapt Dune then? To to to, to like like if like a Fremen kid was like a, trying to be a journalist or yeah. something. <laughs> Cloverfield POV sound footage. Style? Maybe maybe that I mean listen District Nine's a whole other can of worms over here. Yeah, yeah. but I'm, like do you think worms? Do you think, oh shit! Oh. <laughs> but do you think like that that sort of filmography? No, I think would I think bode they, well for that. I think I think. Didn't even know does a pretty fucking good job okay. in terms of terms of turning something that's academic and dry. Yeah. Maybe not clinical is not the maybe not the right word. No, but sterile. academic and dry, sterile. Well, because he it does it with the rival Sicario. They're very sterile movies. And Sanzi, very, very sterile movie. Can I say something about one? So can I just random? Yeah, talk? Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, I like how like there's like Harkonnen, Arrakis, Atreides, all these crazy names, right? And then they're like, oh. The Fremen's used to call this by a Fremen word. Dune. Dune. <laughs> <laughs> the only English word in the fucking movie. Yeah, and that's what they used to call it. That's the ancient Dune word. The ancient fucking Fremen word for your planet. Yeah, I know. Dune. I know. <laughs> fucking, what? Oh, we used to call our planet Sand before you showed up. <laughs> dude, fuck off. But, but it's, ca it's, ca it's called... Word, it, he's calling this academic, word. dude. It's called, it's, called, it's called Wormville. Yeah. <laughs> But so where's Earthworm Jim at? So you're yeah, saying, you're yeah, saying, right? Uh, the changes. So there are cha there are some changes in the first movie too. The first movie, you know, you remember that Asian guy? That's like the 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 met like the yes. healer. Doctor. The Shoot. first yeah. half of the book is entirely told in this POV. Oh really? Oh. Yeah, I but I kind of like how they did it in the movie more. Oh okay. Where it was Paul and yeah. you know uh, Lado, the first Lado, you know. Yeah, that's his name. The change, yeah. the changes in the. Um, the second part are kind of like, they're like, I felt like they were changes done for like blockbuster entertainment, not done for... For drama. They're done for drama. Like, yeah. like Chani mm -hmm. being pissed at yeah, the end exactly. was done for drama. That's what I was thinking about. You know, because even that her being pissed at the end, she's pissed at him. Like, I kind of got the vibe that like, we all know that she's kind of like, kind of having, being disillusioned with him for be, like being a tyrant. Yeah. Right. Which doesn't happen in the book. Um, but, but, but that's fine because it kind of, it kind of foreshadows his kind of, but tyrannical like jihad after but her kind of gang up and being pissed when he's like oh i'm gonna marry you and take your hand to the emperor chick 
I always forget her name. That's like, it comes off to me as her being jealous rather than her being mad that he's being a tyrant. I agree. You know, and I feel like that kind of like subdues those themes. You know, it's kind of like the end of the Barbie movie. You know, the end of the Barbie movie had this super profound ending where they're kind of, they're in this limbo and he's talking and she's, and, and uh, what's her face is Barbie is talking with the crew. The woman that created Barbie. Yeah. That's super profound. And the end of the movie, it's like, it ends with a joke. Oh, I want to see my gynecologist. It's kind of, it kind of like, okay. it kind of like downplays how yeah. profound that part is, right? Yeah. So when he goes and takes the emperor chick's hand and she gets all pissed, it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to downplay all the fucking foreshadowing we're doing for his fucking jihad later by being jealous that he wants to fuck another woman. You know, like, I hate that. I, I hate agree. that. I felt like, mm-hmm. although anyway. Johnny was a lot less in the first one yeah i found her character to be deeper she had more depth maybe it was just mystery that was in that the, the allure of her concubine in the first deep. one yeah but then in the second one she felt way more one-dimensional way more just like ooh, i love paul I well, like super paul. passive aggressively too. and then ooh, he's being mean yeah and then oh my god yeah but in the Far book she's cute? in the book she's ride or die she's ride right. or die the whole way you know How's he? Because my question too is, if if Chani's mad and she fucks off back to the south, then how is he going to impregnate her in in the next movie? You know, in yeah. the movie, I don't know. Maybe he'll, Uber's a sandworm. Yeah, I was going to say he'll come in a sandworm, and yeah. the sandworm will go and he'll take it to her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Another big, another big difference, big difference in the book and the movie, other than the the religion stuff, you know, is you know the mom's pregnant. Yeah. In the book, when she drinks the 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 or the worm pits, yeah, she gives birth right then and there. Oh, cool! And when that kid, when Aaliyah, on your Taylor Joy, yeah, grows up, like when she's like a kid, like three years old, yeah, she stirs up a lot of shit before the end of this movie. Oh, okay. Like in the book, she's the one who kills Baron Harkonnen, a three year old. Yeah, three year old. She's like the most powerful three year old ever because she's actually the. Messiah. No, no, her her older brother, uh, like her, um, no, 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 uh, Paul's son is going to be the Messiah. Actually, or is he, a, again, a fake prophet? Well, everyone's a fake prophet. Because prophecy is bullshit. Right, because it's all the, the Benedict Jizz rats just inserting. <laughs> Benedict <laughs> Jizz rats, yeah. <laughs> just inserting their Yeah, propaganda. none of this, pro- like, none of the, like, the only, the people that really have the power are the Benny Jizz rats. Right, which then is what, is, is what plays into that theme of politicians corrupting religion to control populations. Exactly. Or religion exactly. Exactly. corrupting politicians. No, no, no. Politicians corrupting religion. Oh, right, because they're technically... Poly- okay, they're yeah, weaponizing the religion. Right, yeah, okay, right. I see what you mean. Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, but yeah, look, like, and that's... I think that's a pretty important part of the story, you know, because um, she's right. not the Messiah. She's like... They call her an abomination, which is true in the books, because she was she uh, was born after the mom drank the, the worm piss. Julia! Yeah. I'm gonna fucking kill you. And and that kind of that kind of creates like um, Aaliyah becomes like this this really really powerful being because of it. Okay. This like forbidden powerful being kind right. of thing. Because she know? was born with worm piss for blood. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Basically. Julia. Sorry yeah, guys, I can't. Another question. What? Do do the Fremen call it worm piss in a derogatory way because they don't believe in that whole mystical shit, or is it actually worm piss? Uh, it's the blood of the worm. It's the blood. Okay, that's what I yeah. thought. Cool. It looked good. It looked nice color. Yeah, it looked cake tasty. I don't know what you were saying about all context and everything. Like, the context adds to the story and, like, elevates the story. And yeah. I think now, with all this context, I like the movie less, I think. Ooh. Yeah, I was I expecting so. that from you. Yeah, but it's yeah. too much. To you you see yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, it's not... it, you just can't put this shit in the fucking movie. That's the thing. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem to, to but I think tell what, a story. What Nick is saying is that you shouldn't put it in the movie. You don't need to put it in the movie. But yeah, adding that to the like, movie would make it worse. Yeah, like it's it's too much world. It's it convoluted. Is. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can put it in the movie, but be it, make it subtle. Yeah, but I mean, if you're boiling down like the story, like I, I find that that would be a fucking long movie if they were explaining all this stuff in between. So be, like, that's what subtle. yeah. That's what I. That's where I think the beauty of cinema shines is in the absence of exposition. Yeah, you can just yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, so I think. I think what Denis Villeneuve should have done instead of adding more to the movies to make it closer to the books, he should have actually shown less. Sure. And left a lot of more of that stuff in the background but, and turned Dune into more of a... 
a little magical, maybe. More yeah. mysterious. It's de- it's, it, the books are definitely more magical. Okay. Like, it could have been... Because I feel like... I feel like... So, the Dune Part 1 just felt like prologue. Yeah, me, it, right? is, it is, though. And then I watched Dune Part 2, and I was like, oh, wait, hold, hold on a, a minute. Because now Dune Part 1 and Dune Part 2 feel like prologue. Well, they are. But that's dumb. Yeah, to, but to do for a movie, they're fucking eight books. Like you know, it's like that's I know, why that's it's like I think I think like to I adapt Dune Denny Villeneuve instead of attempting to adapt the whole series and keep lining himself up for a slam dunk next time. Sure, he should have just turned the first Dune book into a more personal story Ten minutes of summary. this poor kid who is the result of centuries of eugenics. Like he should have turned just into a tra- into the Paul Trades a tragedy, just a character piece. Sure, yeah. I feel like that would have been more effective. Yeah, that, that than might what be we what, got. That might be what the miniseries. But but is, starting on two. But yeah. my, my my thing is that it could still be consistent with what the books have in the books, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, for sure. Yeah, like you don't have to expose those things, but you can have them still be consistent. Where it's like, yeah. you could watch this movie without without a lot of it in it, but be like, okay, if it were in it, it would still be the same. Right, but kind of thing. it detracts from it. From like, the story overall, that you're missing these elements. It doesn't distract from it because the en- end of the day, yeah. the conclusion's the same. But then it's a better story without the fat on it. Because then you're just streamlining it. You're getting right to the. It could be. Of- it could be. But it's like it's like Lee said. You either you got you got um, for me. It's like you got you got to go either all in mm-hmm. or don't go all in at all. Yeah, I think Denny Villeneuve. Yeah. He tried. He tried to go halfway. Or he's doing public, big yeah. fucking thing. Yeah, and trying to make it palatable. Because he he read the books. He loves doing. Yeah, allegedly, according to him, he he made a storyboard for the first Dune book when he was in a university when he was like yeah. our age. So he this this movie's been in his mind for for decades. Yeah, and I think if you love the book so much, how can, it's so hard to make a Lex exposition. Exactly. Like, I think, yeah, but again, but like, like, you yeah. you, you want to include as much of the parts you like from the book. Well, yeah. so that's the thing. So I I saw an interview. He was saying that he related to Paul the most. So throughout the entire time, okay. nobody does it. So that's the thing, right? So when he's you, gonna go kill everyone at UCAM. Well, <laughs> whoa. So so, but that's the thing. So when you when you start um, associating yourself with a character in a book, you start just associating yourself with that viewpoint completely. So the way we're seeing Timothy play Paul, I think, is just essentially Denis Villeneuve being Paul. It's 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 this it's this way in which. Mm-hmm. He's trying to humanize, uh, rather, I, I don't know, in the book, I just think he's kind of an egocentric, meek, um, not very, like, he's wise, but he's not very um, street smart. You know what I mean? Like, But he's not wise. He's wise because he has access to exactly. these ben, but that's Benedict the, but that's Israel powers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing. Better he's not than street smart. Right. He's, that's and, and so, like, when you... Right, when it's you, wisdom without intelligence. Exactly. So, yeah. it's, yeah. so thank you. That so, comes through in the movie, though. It comes through in the movie, but not not in such a way that it's um uh it's it's not very efficient. It's, it's sympathetic. Uh, yeah, no, you're kind of like I, I mean, think well, Frank Herbert. Yeah, sorry, because yeah, so just just to finish the thought here. Yeah, the way because I re- saw that interview before I came into Dune Part One, I'm like, okay, so this is just gonna be Paul the movie, mm-hmm. and I have to just think of Paul the movie mm-hmm. because the way he was talking about Dune all the time yeah. was. I really like Paul. I was really interested in Fremen. I was really immersed with the idea that it's this kid, this teenager my age, when I was reading the book, being involved in this new world. So I want to experience this world. I want to be in touch with Arrakis. That's his interview. That was uh, literally like a month before. I think he does it, a pretty good job of it. It was on the Graham Norton show or something. One of these like British interviews. Okay. Where he was like, uh, yes, uh, you know, I like you. Yeah, I, like, I like doing a lot. And uh, you know, it's uh, really cool for me because uh, Paul was really something I wanted to associate myself with. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, so I'm like, okay, so I'm so going into that. Didn't even ever yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Well, here's some are, are you going to lose your thought? Just, sorry, go. No, yeah. No, no, but no, that was it. Okay. That was it. I have good. something to say, though. Yeah, you go. The reason why I like the foreshadowing of him becoming a tyrant, because he doesn't actually do anything bad in the movie. He doesn't do not anything. Yet. Not yet. No, but like, he doesn't do anything fucked up in the movie yet, which mm. is also why I kind of don't like the foreshadowing, because yeah. no, one, no one around him has any reason to dislike him. Really. No. Except the Bene Gesserit. Except a bit. But even then, not really, because it's their fucking plan the whole time. Yeah, but it's he's a guy. No, no, but their plan was to always have a guy become the the Kwisatz Hatterat. But, the they, but, he, but they know he's not the Kwisatz Hatterat. They, they think he might be. too early. 
They think it's they think he is, but they do know it's too early and they think it's a bit of a fuck up. Mm. Okay. But they're riding with it because it's happening. They're riding with it because it's happening. Okay. Um in the books, you finish the first book, bro. You think Paul Trades is like the greatest person ever. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that like he's no. not that no, but for real, like when you finish the first book, you think Paul Trades is a hero, he's a god, he's like the best dude ever. Well, that's that's to the point that I was going to make is that what I read was that 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 feeling is what everyone left with after the first book. But that's not what Frank Herbert was trying to achieve. No. That's why yeah. he wrote Dune Messiah to make everyone realize Paul's that, bad. That 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 Paul's bad. Yes. But he, Paul doesn't do anything in the first book that is bad. Right. He wants to make Paul be bad because because you fell in love with him. Oh, okay. Because you fell in love with him, because you liked him as a, as a leader. Yeah. Now as let a me Messiah, show you what a true. I'll show you what a true leader does. Right. Okay. Cool. And that's yeah. what I don't like about the foreshadowing because mm. it would be so good if we finished the second Dune movie with everyone fucking loving Paul like he's the best guy ever like he's Ken in fucking Barbie alright and then in the next movie he's just fucking killing billions and billions of people in the universe you can't for religion you cannot you cannot um you can't put distrust in your audience when making a film. You, you can, can because that it, it makes that punch. There's a different rule. It makes, it makes that punch no, like of distrust. It. it makes that I punch. Know, I know you're subverting it, but again, like to the it. point, yeah. no way, okay, yeah. then we're going to Because that's what they did in the books. Oh, well, yeah. then yeah. if that's so great, why didn't you like the ending of uh, Game of Thrones? I did. Well, that, no way. I know you did. Yeah. I no, no, no. Why didn't you? I liked. I liked the well, last. With you. Well, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> no, I liked. I liked the last three, two episodes of, of the Game of Thrones. Interesting. Show. Which I hated the last like? four seasons. Really, season six I was see. awesome. No, so, the, the, the the that season f- like end of season five, season six is when all the filmmaking, like the quality of the production, yeah, was really goes down. What season? There was that, the one episode when Joffrey's younger brother, Tommen. Tommen. When he kills himself. Yeah. What season is that? That's, That's like, the last season. No, no. It's like it's, five or six. It's definitely like six or seven. Like, it's not five. Six, That's it's six, sure. it's six. Anyway, that's my favorite season. Six is... But my, my thing is, like, once you get to season six, oh, now now instead of, like... You know how before it's like, oh, you're in Winterfell, but they don't... They don't they don't show you, like, an aerial view of Winterfell? Season six, they start showing you, oh, we're gonna go to, um... What's, what's another place? We're going to oh, go... King's Landing. We're going to go to King's Landing? We're going to do a little aerial shot as a transition for you to know where... We're going we're gonna to do an exposing... Yeah. Kind of like... Um, well, I think just because their audience got too big. Their audience strayed from people who have read the no, books. No, I think, I think, they, I think they were just like... They're really dipping the quality of what... Okay. Well, I... But, so, I so on that... So because... So I think that you shouldn't betray... That's the word I was looking for. There, yes, you can well, always you subvert... Because that's what politicians do. No, but you can always... That's the scene, bro. Yes, but you can always subvert... Um, you can always subvert expectations at all times. Yeah. But there is this golden rule in film: show, don't tell. Right. Okay. You don't have to show it. No, you don't have to show it, but you still have to show it. You still have to show the process of foreshadowing. Because when you're watching a movie, let's say you are watching a movie. Wow, Paul is so cool, and then all of a sudden, Paul's character, right, Jason, switches to immediately stab someone. Like, let's say right now I'm doing a podcast, da 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 da, and I just slap Nick. Okay. That's kind of weird. Yeah, but like, I think I think you know what I mean. Like, well, no, but, yeah, no, but the, like that. No, but the, 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 so the, his. But if I was like, oh, no, but, Nick, shut no, up. Lee, or, uh, like, last, if I told the, him, the slow burn of his tyr- tyr- tyrannical jihad happens in the second book. Yes, but if book. I should, but if I started, if I like, let's say we're doing the podcast and Nick was like talking, and I'm like, shut up, Nick. Anyway, da 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 da. Shut up, Nick. Stop talking. Da 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 da. Yeah. Nick, I don't like you. Da 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 da. And then I just go like this. Ah, oh, then there was a build up. You still have to build it up a little bit. The the, the build up, not the book. No, I'm not talking about the book. Him, the him becoming the Messiah is the build up in itself. His yes. vision. That's the yes. point of the book. No, no, yes, that is the point. But the thing is, is that he's right now. Right now, he's like, oh, I don't want to do this, bro. I don't want to see that. I don't want to become. I think. I think the dreams is sufficient build up enough. No, there's sufficient build up of what's gonna happen, Maybe. but there's not sufficient build up. In how, why he changes his mind on what is happening. I mean, he, okay, no, yeah. but he never right. changes. You know no, I mean? He never changes his mind, though. But hold he up. is always going to do Nick. a jihad. Hold up. I love because it. I think <laughs> we're we're arguing this, but but what what Dante and I are saying, yeah, is that the movie should have been so different as to amend your problems that you're having with our new movie that we're like our our, our you're you're arguing against our hypothetical, right? 
in relation to the movie that's already made. Yes, absolutely. We're, yeah. we're saying it okay. would be a whole new movie. It would okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. You're yeah. not remaking. Yeah, no, no, that, yeah. Okay, okay. We, okay. It would ha- it would have to be made completely different yes. so as to have that just superposition. Ah, I with see. All the not with more not with about. this version of right, it. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, no, not really. Like you could there's I'm there's okay. very, there's very few then things. For that I agree. Okay. You only have to change a little bit of stuff in this movie to make it like like how. But you still got to change the movie. Yeah, exactly. You can't just apply your law of. Paul's an idiot, an asshole, mean person. Based like, because the way the laws are are kind of like in place for this movie, Paul is a reluctant hero still, just a bit. But then you're like, uh, I don't think he is. Anything. Yeah, but you don't think yeah. he's a bad guy. That's the thing. Ooh, I, I don't think. I think he's an. Yeah, I, but because of the way the evil, whole movie portrays, I don't think he's evil. Mm-hmm. I think he's egocentric yeah. and an asshole. I think he. To, I don't. Sure. I don't like him anymore as much. No, no, but he becomes evil. Well, you kill that many people, you're an evil guy. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but he's not now. I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut here at the yeah. end of that thought. No worries. I have to pee. No problem. And when we get back, let's talk about the actual movie and not the book. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so fuck the book. We're gonna we're gonna start. But but to to for final notes, final thoughts about the book versus the movie. What I said about the book versus the movie is those are the most important changes. Like they're mm. not everything else, all the other little changes are not important. These are these are important changes. That being said, the movie um, stylistically, the way oh. they even made it, I think it's pretty fucking good. I think it's pretty good. I thought it was boring. You thought it was boring. The visuals, you're talking the visuals, about? yeah. Oh yeah? yeah, I mean it's a lot of the same kind of thing. But so the it is a lot of the same. Fantastic. Like I like the, the colors. Costumes I find were fantastic. Really? I thought I loved the colors. again. You know, see, see, oh, costume, yeah. costume. Yeah, I'm, I'm on your side on that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, the I, 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 this I, time the cool. costumes were a little basic. Yeah. Dude, 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 dude. The 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 the, the Fremen and like like you know outside of their little suit there, their their water suits. Yeah. Super fucking Arabic, like real old time, you know, astronomy Arabic looking shit in the book. Like the the movies, like I don't think they do the fucking yeah Fremen style justice. There's, um, well, Fremen, yeah, I thought that was a little dorky their suits, but I'm thinking more like like the Imperial Court and stuff. Those that kind of people, those costumes yeah. compared to the first movie. Second movie has way better costumes because well, there's just more. I found when those opening ceremonies, those first few scenes, it was the military, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah, but you see like the fucking oh, sorry, the bubble you, helmets. You didn't like oh, the, 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 the Sardaukar. Yeah, 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 and even at the no? beginning when they're doing. Oh, oh, sorry, I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum here. I like the costumes much more in the first movie. Me too. Than yeah, the second movie. Me too. I didn't like yeah. the costumes either. Because at, at least the Atreides had like this kind of like um, Arab uh, kind of like chic, like costume design. Really, you the thought Fremen. The, Fremen. You said the, the the Atreides in the first one. Atreides. Only in the first one, yeah. I thought you said it was more like gypsy Sheet. style. Yeah, like. gypsy. No, but the Fremen. But yeah. I'm saying also the uh, the Atreides a bit too. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, I thought they were much more uh, British, like very regal, regal, in, no, but military you. regal. Oh yeah. In, in in the first one, you see like Paul has like this kind of like, also his like room, the way it's designed, and all that sort of kind of stuff. Like all all the little things, not just the costumes though. I find. No. Oh, okay. I think I think you're talking about like his PJs or whatever. But I'm talking about like when they're I'm outside. talking about his PJs. Okay. When they're talking when they're outside in Caladan, and then. Um, Oscar Isaac is like, son, look at this water. You're not going to see this anymore. They're all yeah, like yeah. very regal. Yeah, they're wearing the military. Oh, yeah, 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 completely yeah, yeah. Ceremonial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like military or ceremonial. He's like ceremonial and he puts a military suit on him. Like, that's the exact same thing. Why'd you <laughs> ask? <laughs> yeah. You know, you have two suits but, that are identical. Why'd you ask? But buddy? yeah, yeah, no, for me, it's like the costumes in the first one were much more. Well, honestly, maybe it's because it was the first time seeing these costumes and now I'm seeing them again in the second movie. So I'm like, Okay, I've seen this already. Yeah. So maybe yeah. there's that like bias yeah. of just like I saw it for the first time in the first one, and then there's, I liked there were some cool headpieces. Yeah. I liked Paul's yeah. mother's. Oh, dude, her costume. costume no, but in it the sh- it one? should be way more over the top gypsy than that. Well, that's so I agree. Everything should be more over the top. Everything. And but it was good. It was good. Though. Yodorowsky's Dune has ruined it for me mm-hmm. because Yodor- Yodorowsky's Dune's yeah. design yeah. for the costumes and the yeah. sets and everything mm-hmm. I find consistently so much. Fucking cool. See, see, even yeah. Lynch's. I loved Lynch's costume design. I agree. Fucking, mm, yes. Like the Harkonnen leather kind yes. of BDSM. I, I love agree. it, dude. I find Denis Villeneuve has made the Harkonnen so fucking boring. The Harkonnen. I mean, they're supposed they're to. Weird, That's, it's though. part of their like theme. He said. But have you like, seen Yodorowsky's Dune? I've not. I have to watch. That. Yodorowsky's Dune is a documentary. Yeah, I've yeah on Alejandro Yodorowsky's mm-hmm. conceptual yeah, his yeah, vision yeah. for Dune and um. A big part of it is that he made this big fucking textbook of with all his designs, and he he gave it. He should have been a producer on this one. He gave it to a bunch of studios, and all those studios stole all his designs for a bunch of other movies. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Um, but H. R. Geiger, yeah, 
He, yeah, I know, I know. He I was know. supposed to I've design. Seen, seen he designed all the Harkonnen shit. He was supposed to do the worms too. So fucking cool. They they ended up ripping all those designs for yeah. Alien, Alien Prometheus. They yeah. credited H. R. Geiger at least. Yes. Well, they always credit H. R. Geiger for Alien. Yeah, yeah. It just oh, in general. Yeah. But like, um, but I find I find for the I know you d- you disagreed with the environmental theme. Yeah. But I find in relation to that theme, which I think, which I base more importance on in the movies, I haven't read the books, but in the movies, um, I think the Harkonnen should have been more industrial and less minimalistic. I like the brutalism. I kind of like the minimalist part. I like the brutalism, but I found it boring. Like, if if 90% of your movie is in the fucking desert and all I'm looking at is sand all the goddamn time, and then I'm finally on a new planet and it's just white sand, well, actually, Bruh. actually, he filmed all, <laughs> all, all the stuff on Gaty Prime was filmed with an, with the infrared camera. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's fucking sick. Like I thought cool. that shit was sick. Technically, it is cool, but I found and I, and I I say this, I loved it. I loved it. I did. Yeah, I love the style. I love brutalism. I do. And some of my favorite shots are just like interior and exterior shots on the Harkonnen planet. Yeah, mm-hmm. but at the same time, Gaty I Prime. think it should have been. It would have been a lot cooler if it was like not cyberpunk, but like maximalist like, like, industrial, like um, like like post-industrial kind yeah, of like yeah, yeah. uh, Ramstein shit. Yeah, you know? like real. I, I think that would have been more like Mad effective. Maxi. That's still too much sand. That's too much. No, sand. no, no. Sorry. So like the way they're all dressed, the way they're all like the aesthetic of he like, means like the, sewers and shit. You know, everything like, should have just looked like a oh, fucking so rundown like factory. Super Mario Bros. The movie from the nineties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually yeah. not kidding. Like straight up, like that so, aesthetic. So, so everything here, should everything on the what's Getty Getty Prime? Yeah, Getty 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 Prime. Yeah, yeah. Everything should just look from like Prime a back stuff. alley of a fucking uh, factory. See, he, yeah. here's yeah. here's why I grew through a lot. Honestly. Super Mario Bros. The movie is literally yeah, that. It's that, just that's that. what I think. My thing, my, it's not really my biggest gripe with this movie because the plot stuff, like with the book, is my. But stylistically, like you know me, I love the brutalism. Yeah, you know, my paintings. You know, yeah. follow me on Instagram. Um, my thing is my my big reason for liking the first movie over this one, outside of it, it being accurate to the book and whatever. You see more of Denis Villeneuve in the first movie. You see more of his mm. brutalist kind of like liminal kind of like lines of perspective. Mm-hmm. I mean, this one does all only take place really in the desert. But I feel like he ha- there was moments where he could have thrown that Villeneuve brutalist kind of like phenomenology sculpture minimalist flair into it. I agree. And he did it. I agree. And and that's why like even when we were saying when we watched the first one, mm-hmm. we were disappointed that it wasn't Super artsy, like we were expecting yeah. more from Villeneuve to be even more stylist, yeah. stylistic with like how he is, you know. And he wasn't as much in the first one, right? The first Dune. Yeah. This one's even less. Yeah. So I like it less than the first I one. Agree. That's my main reason for not liking this one as much as the first one. You I know? feel like because Villeneuve <laughs> is working on such a big project, he feels the need yeah, to do to. everything big. But no. if he would have and and accessible. It's yeah, very, Julia, I swear to fucking God, I'm going to snap your neck. Fuck off. Yo, okay, yeah, go on, just go on. Is the mic even picking her up, or is the, are the audience just going to hear you yelling at her? I don't know, That that's just like going to be like Jacob and all my other friends on Discord. <laughs> they think it's I'm talking to my girlfriend when, I, when I'm talking to my fucking cat who's like being annoying. Yeah, Julia's a cat, by the way. Yeah, it's my cat. Over He's here. not yelling at yeah. a poor woman in the corner. No, no, no. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I think Vrnev got lost in the spice. I think his style and his... Autourship. <laughs> you were waiting to say that one. Though. I think I said it last time too. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I do think um, his touch is lost. If you would mm. show me any other Villeneuve movie, I could tell it's Villeneuve. This if one you, you can't yeah, as much. If it, you show me Dune and you don't tell me, it's yeah, yeah, it it could be. I think so. Too. I mean, he does have good shots in the desert. Like he does have like a lot of beautiful shots. Yeah. But it, there's I mean, it, it's not his style. These kinds of shots. I find you know? it boring. Yeah. To be honest, I find the, the it visually gets boring very quickly. Well, bo- mm. I'll, I'll, boring's a strong word. I feel like I'm just. It's too it's, sterile. It's, it's well, it's not even not even sterile. It's just it's just very normal movie. The Nothing first, stood out to me yeah. as like conceptually or artistic. It's just like yeah. oh, normal movie. This is what you yeah. do for movies. Well, That's what like I perfectly. But again, here's yeah. my. It's more like put the camera, look at the fucking sand. Dude. 
so like, yeah, here, so here's my question for you guys then, because I mean, I didn't, I mean, I, I understand where everyone's coming from on this, and I kind of agree. But again, is it just because that we're just used to the first one being like, whoa, this is something new, and then they're just playing in that sandbox now? So because we're all familiar with that environment, do you think that it's just like a, a not a recency bias, but like the complete opposite, where it's like. I've seen this already. No, I think the feel is completely different. Because we are on just this one planet. It's not like Star Wars where you go to Tatooine yeah. and you yeah. go to uh, Timbuktu. Or well, we do, we do go called, to Gaby you know? Prime in this movie. And yeah. we do yes, go to, uh, yes, we do. But like literally, and by the way, that was my favorite part of the movie. So all my, uh, we'll talk about, about that later. But but the whole, that switch of Gaby Prime, for me, that contrast from very warm I, I love to the fucking milky look on the skin. Oh, cool. Dude, yeah, that was cool, awesome. And especially, and again, to the point of when, didn't even have like, I understand, like, okay, there's a lot of stuff that could have been done better, but, oh, my God, every interview I've seen about it, it was thought out. The whole idea of that black sun, and then they shot in um, infrared, and then they just switched it back to, like, normal, yeah. that's genius. So That's a, so cool, you know? I have know? a question about that, because they filmed in infrared and then went negative, right? Yes. So does that mean Elvis was in blackface for all those times? <laughs> no. They, they it, No, 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 no. They, they were... Um, they were just in like very cakey, cakey, cakey makeup. Yeah. And it was it, it was just like filmed with like these really harsh lighting, very very harsh yeah. lighting. So they were painted white. Yeah, they were ca- so essentially it, kind of like not black face. Okay, so they, they didn't negative everything. It no, no, no. They, they negative in the sense that it's like infrared, okay. and then they just like okay. color think, correct it later in post. I thought. Cause, sorry, because okay. so, you know how like there's a switch in during the scene where it's like. Um, He's not in, in, like, you don't see him in black and white. Yeah, his skin looks white. His skin looks very, like, greasy and weird and pale and very lizard-like. Yes. Okay? And then when they move in that exact same shot, you just go black and white. It's the exact same camera. It's the same thing. There's no switch. It's the same shot from beginning to end. That's what's cool. And so, like, they switch it in color grading later. It's in post that they do that. It's not with the camera. It's just in post. Anyway. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, my yeah, I the I I noticed my thoughts were pretty much exactly the same at the beginning of Dune One and Dune Two, mm. where the movie opens and especially once we get to Arrakis, Dune Two we're in Arrakis the whole time. Dune One we get to Arrakis eventually, but the the Arrakis stuff, there's a few desert shots. I'm like, ooh, very pretty, yeah, very cool. And then three shots later, I'm like, ooh, I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> Like, I think literally the first, like, ten minutes of Dune Part 2, I was like, oh, okay, this is going to be good. Yeah. And then ten minutes later, I was like, oh, okay. It's the same, same Hold thing. Hold up. Mm-hmm. What's going on? It's, yeah. <laughs> so, I, the the desert, yeah. Well, the know. desert does get, it's difficult to film, right? Because especially yeah. when there's, it's all yeah. it is. There's no, like. That's, that's why I feel like there's all the more reason to get experimental and to get. Like a little avant garde with your cinematography yeah, you, you to compensate do, you for. You can do a million things to spice yeah. it up. Like in Star Wars, just spice stick it up. Poking up, you know, just <laughs> no, to, exactly. Like one one idea I I had after we watched the Dune movie, Dune Part Two. I really wish he did this. I, I really he might have not even thought of it. Like it could have been, been bad too. My idea there. It's like, you know, the fight at the end versus um Paul versus Stade. Yeah. yeah. I wanted that to be a still camera one shot scene the whole time, where you know how like they're on the balcony and the sun's here, and the crowds over here. Yeah, I wanted the sh- the camera to be in the crowd, watching them, and they're both silhouetted. I agree. The whole fight. I had literally the exact same thought. Yeah, but leave me and you. No joke, dude. The entire that entire fight scene, I was like, I would have done it. I would have done it this way. And that is the exact way I would have done it. Yeah, but, yeah, but we, me and you, we're, we think very similar. Yeah. You know, I, for also, a lot of things, not just this. I also would have done the choreography differently. It would have been more like a dance, more rhythmic. More rhythmic. But that that's like getting into the real chic, like, yeah. gypsy yeah. shit, right? Yeah. You gotta do it. Your jimbo and one. And like I said, yeah. and, and just a hose. Yeah. You know? Exploded. May your knife Like, how that kitty, you don't, know? you know? Standing for 45 <laughs> seconds, and then you do it. But, but awesome. yeah, I wanted the whole scene to be one shot. Yeah. No cuts, no edits, just them fighting, mm. where it's just their black silhouettes. And when Paul kills Fade, then the camera shows up on the other side with the light. Yeah. I think that would have been fucking That'd sick. Be cool, yeah. I thought that whole thing was fucking stupid, though. I think, I think was... Paul fucking sucks. I think he's fucking lame character. He's not in any way intimidating or anything. This fucking guy. Well, he's, he's supposed to be like this Prince Twink in the books, too, where he's yeah, just but gonna even fight. Then, I don't see how he can fucking. 
like murder guy. Yeah, but that's what makes him the messiah. I guess. But <laughs> he I mean, does. But Come here's on. okay. So here's to that point. Like you, you don't necessarily like him as a like he doesn't look very intimidating. But that's the point, right? It's yeah. these characters, usually yeah. politicians. Yeah, I can stalk someone. You know, like that yeah, guy. I can fight. You think, I you, fight think you think guy? Joe Biden's intimidating, bro? <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't have to fight another guy. I mean, he <laughs> probably kill a couple motherfuckers, bro. I tell you that. I mean, I don't know. But like, I'll tell you that. they'll give him some drug to make you I fight think, him off. I think he right? sells enough weapons overseas to consider him a murderer. <laughs> to consider him like like uh, like an <laughs> MMA fighter for sure, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, but that's the thing, right? So like. I think that's the point of the book, and there's the point of the characterization of the characters. He's also described as this lanky kind of like no bone, no no real muscle mass kind of character, mm-hmm. and then he kind of becomes like this like I own you, you know? It's like Ugh. it's kind of like Palpatine. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Do it, kill you, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I just really can't get it. The, the the first act of Dune Part Two really bothered me. Just this. Mm pseudo montage it just felt like a fucking powerpoint of paul atreides achievements <laughs> and then the movie started yeah it was very stupid and yeah. the whole build up to the worm too i found the worm out there yeah. everyone's riding worms like crazy yeah. they got a carriage on it like, fucking yeah stupid. within two minutes it was just like yeah. the worm is there now um, i feel like instead of starting dune part two 10 seconds after dune part one ended they should have started dune part two three years after Paul is accepted in the Fremen and he has his Fremen. Oh, that would have been, and then I would just get into the movie. Exactly. Because yeah, yeah. we all know he's going to get there. Because yeah. really, really, the, the, yeah. the movie really starts when he gets to the South. That's what, none of this fucking montage bullshit of like, oh, he does this and everyone, oh, good job, Paul. And then, oh, what's your warrior name? And he's like, oh, the mouse. Fucking, yeah, mouse. It's like, okay. <laughs> Muadib, yeah. And then it's like, that whole like montage Mossy. sequence of him becoming a Fremen, I was like, trash that, dude. Trash that and make the rest longer. Yeah, yeah, because the rest is so dense anyways in the book. Yeah, you know, and so well. much better, and so much more fun, because it's not just the same dude. Now, it's not just same. people patting yeah. Paul on the back for three What hours. would be sick, though, is, I know it's not going to happen, but what would be sick is if they didn't do Messiah at all, they left the, the, the TV OVA yeah. be Messiah, and he just jumps to the third Straight fucking book. God Emperor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do we see the worm in the, thir- in the second book? Uh, the second book, his son just starts becoming the worm at the end of it. Okay. But he didn't fucking become the worm in the second worm, book. dude. So, but now, because for me, honestly, I think I think one of my issues yeah, with the you movie... Know the, you know the worm? The baby worm. The baby worm that they yeah, the suck the blood worm? from and yeah. they, they, Paul fucks in the pond? Yeah. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, Jared Leto the third merges with, <laughs> he merges with the that. baby worm. Not with a giant sandwich. Oh, well, that's lame. Dude. And he becomes a, a hybrid of the oh, two. Oh, what a huge worm. But I, I also, in my mind, every time someone said that, I always imagined him just being literally a giant sandwich. Yeah, well, I was picturing the whole worm and then a little guy. His body. Yeah, yeah just the arms. No, it's kind of like Shin Godzilla where the yeah. tail's just a bunch of dead people. In, 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 the, in, the, in the book, he's like a thick worm head. with like a human head. Oh, nice. Yeah. Just the head? But he's he's like, what? He, he's like three times as long as a human is. Like yeah, he's not like he's huge. huge. He's not massive. He's not massive. He's not like sandworm. He's not full grown sandworm. He's not full grown sandworm. But he's like he's like, pretty fucking big. Like he's, dragon size. Like how we how big we would imagine a dragon. Like maybe More like half giraffe. the size of a ba- like the like a giraffe. Like a giraffe. Oh okay, yeah. Like a giraffe. Okay, yeah. I was gonna say like the basilisk from Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah essentially, secrets, kind yeah. of. Yeah. But that's cringe, though. That's, so, so, uh, <laughs> that's a funny reference to Paul. <laughs> but, full title and everything. I think I fucked up, though. It's a, it's a he transforms under the, in, the, in the little room under the stairs. That's what happens there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think one of my issues with the, like, the movie is, honestly, I think Christopher Walken is not a good choice for the Emperor. Yeah, the Emperor sucked, too. The costume was shit. It's like, I, what the fuck was that? It was yeah. just a drab, it was just a drab cloth. Compared to everyone else. It was else. like, hey, uh, you watch. You yeah. gotta, you gotta, look, look listen, uh, Bruce Willis. You gotta turn the watch this way, and, yeah. uh, come on now. Yeah, Too nice. Like, I think, I think Willem agree. Dafoe would have been a better Emperor. That's my opinion. Willem Dafoe would be a better <laughs> Paul. He would be a better, <laughs> he would be a better. <laughs> no, but I think the I Emperor, I think. I think the Emperor was very poorly introduced. The Very guy, the guy built up. It, yes. I'm sorry, but we were all fearing the emperor. And what is it? It's just like, hey, it's uh, me, Christopher Walken. No, no, yeah, no. The, the, the emperor. Who, who? What's the guy's name there? Um, not Duncan Idaho. Who's the other guy there? The trainer. Oh, uh, Gurney. With the scar. Gurney Halleck. Yeah. Yeah. 
He would, should have been there. Oh, Josh Brolin? Oh, yeah, Josh Christian Brolin. Christian Bale should have been there. Ooh, yeah. Hey, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> let him lose 100 pounds, give him that machinist build, and then let him be the Emperor just to fucking skeleton. <laughs> but I think maybe... Actually, actually, okay. No, 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 no. The, the, the Force... Emperor definitely does like protein shakes, no, for wait. sure, bro. Thor 4 sucked as a movie. Thor Chris, 4? Thor 4. Thor Love and Thunder sucked. Okay. But Christian Bale in this is just the Emperor. Like, honestly, yeah. he's just like, ah, I'm going to kill you. But I think Christopher Walken as the Emperor Did it was for me. an intentional choice. It was. To downplay his power as a weak. Because of the just yeah. rats and Florence. Right? They control this. him. Yeah. Right. I, interesting. Right. Interesting. Interesting. Florence Pugh didn't say a word. I didn't mind. But, so, like, she's pretty, you know? But she again, is, I needed more for I her. liked her costumes the most. Like, like, mm. like Worm Tongue. Yes. Lord of the Rings. Exactly. Yeah, but Worm Tongue is the Benny Gesserit. Right. Yeah. Okay. What's what's his, what's his name again? The Saruman. Ge- no, the 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 leader of Rohan. Boromir. No. Oh, right. Faramir. No, yeah, the king. The king of Rohan. The king of Mir. Oh, whatever. Theoden. The, yeah. Theoden. Yeah. Theoden. Yeah. 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 Um. Yeah, I like I I enjoy I seeing Christopher Walken. <laughs> yeah, see, to for be me, honest, for I me, like I was really excited, and pods, then he spoke. Dude. I was like, oh, yeah. I was expecting a much more. You no know, spice. I can't do an impression. Yeah. Oh, no, I can't do an impression. No, no spice. It's totally <laughs> good for a bit. You know, Bruce Willis, uh, the son. Okay, Bruce is not in this movie, bro. <laughs> okay, but I like referencing that scene. <laughs> Yeah, I know you do. We did it in a second. <laughs> I didn't mind that casting, to be honest. Okay. I didn't mind any of the casting. I think, actually, Dude, no, you know Stellan what? Stellan Skarsgård as fucking Baron Harkonnen. I mean, yeah. Thumbs up. You know what I didn't like? Yeah. The kiss? Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya, I think, are bad actors. Ooh. Yeah, I don't think they're very good either. For this movie or just For this general? movie. Okay. I think Timothy Chalamet is a very good actor when it comes to playing subtle characters. He has a way with subtlety. Yeah. He has a way with nuance that I intimacy, think... Intimacy, I find, too. Yes, exactly. Very super, intimate, super dramatic voice. characters. Like, I, I he's lost, not operatic, I he, think. He yeah. lost his charm with me, I found. I thought I liked yeah. him at first, and then the more I see him now, the less I kind of like him. Well, because he keeps mm. getting... Because he got so popular, they gave him roles... I thought he was garbage yeah. in Wonka, too. Well, he was. Yeah. too big of a character... For his style he's of not, acting. He's not operatic enough. He's yeah, not exactly. very out he's not very outgoing. Like he, the, Gene Wilder would have been a great No, I, I agree. I, <laughs> the, he would have. I, I agree a thousand percent with you. The theme you're talking about about charismatic leaders. He's not very charismatic. He's not charismatic. No. The whole time he's like, I don't wanna go south. <laughs> I don't wanna. Alright, I'll do it. <laughs> like, bro, like, sh- he he's what? like he's like um He's like Joe Biden, but really he needs to be like <laughs> Donald Trump <laughs> He's like Joe Biden, but he needs to be like Donald Trump, you know? We're going to go... Out there, yeah. like, super, super exaggerated. We're going to go out south, down the Marble Lago, I'm going to some golf. Duncan, yeah. Idaho, I love the Idaho people. But... The, 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 the charisma part in, uh, in the fucking books... Yeah. It's is not really, like, a charisma of, like, uh, personality. It's more just, like, that he does so many good things for these people. Sure. And okay. then they fall. Right? Right. We're going to make the Fremen great again. I just, yeah, I don't know. I just don't like, and Zendaya, I also find. Zendaya I, is, is my least favorite casting in the whole it's fucking the weakest, the Yeah, it's movie, the weakest bro. casting, I think, in she the was, movie. She's great. Good in Euphoria? Malcolm and Marie's pretty fucking solid. I so. haven't seen it. It's pretty good. She is good in Euphoria. She's great. But she plays but kind of the it. same character. You know who would have been a great Paul Atreides if we're talking about Euphoria? Jacob Elordi would have been fucking solid, I think. I think so too, actually. That's what's, what's the name? Jacob Elordi? So the jock who's like actually violent and evil. No, uh, who, for Paul, yeah, that would have been pretty solid. Oh yeah, I think so too. That actually probably because he he has the, name, the name out, Jacob Elordi. Like so this he's this guy he's in Saltburn. He's the good looking guy in Saltburn. I didn't, I didn't, well, I didn't watch he's you for you. <laughs> but but no, but there's a lot of subtlety in his acting that I think. He's a good so this guy, he's yeah. great. Yeah. He's great so far. And what I've seen from him. Oh yeah, he would have been a perfect Paul Atreides. He would, and he looks like Oscar Isaac a bit too. A lot more than Timothy. Anyway, so he would have been. I think he would have. So in in if you've seen Euphoria, it's. His acting chops in that, very, very good. He shows a lot of pain. Uh, very evil character. You do not like this man. I don't. I can't like this person at all. But, you know, when he wants to be charming, immediate. It's immediate. Yeah, he's really good. Hey, yeah, no, or, yeah. You know, he's like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it's me. I'm Paul Atreides. And then all of a sudden, bah, you know, it's. I think it would have been a solid choice. Again, to your point, Timothy Chalamet, for as much as the character of Paul is very meek and, you know, subtle and, like, Subtle, and you don't know until you until it hits you. 
Yeah, he's very, he's too much of a, um, he's like nice. He's too nice of a, I think it, it there's a lot of. It's not even nice because in, in, La- in Lady Bird, his character yeah. isn't nice. No, he's but. He's a dickhead. Yeah. But he's subtle. Yeah. That's where Timothy Chalamet shines. Same with French Dispatch. He's like. Yeah, exactly. Not it's this subtle. No, it's subtle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know who would have been a good emperor too is um, Malcolm McDowell. Oh, yeah. he's good. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's kind of yeah. Give him, make him, let him be Paul, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Malcolm McDowell. Oh yeah, yeah. Alex yeah. DeLarge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. He's good. He's Son good. of a critch. Yeah, he's yeah. good. He is good. But um, I also I mentioned the Austin Powers earlier, mm-hmm. so I'd like to now Mike Myers as Hart Conan. <laughs> oh, Mike Myers as Paul. <laughs> Paul, Paul, Paul. <laughs> What uh, are you, my grandson, Paul? I was just going to bring up another reference, and I, I'm i sure these references aren't intentional. I don't think Villeneuve wanted to make me think of Austin Powers. Maybe he did, he, bro. He also, wanted to, he also made me think of <laughs> oh, shit. Life of Brian. Mm-hmm. But Monty Python? Mon- yeah, no, Monty... Yeah, Monty Python's well, the Life of Brian. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the no, Messiah! Mom. No, I'm not. The Messiah would never admit it. Okay, fine, I am the Messiah. He admits it. He's the Messiah. <laughs> Dude, Dude, like the first, the first act is literally just that skit from fucking Life of Brian. Yeah, man. Dude, we gotta talk about fucking Javier Bardem in this movie, though. Who's he? He's good. Yeah. He's uh. He's Stilgar. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Stilgar. Yeah. 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 He's still the fucking. The fucking. It was funny. It was pretty funny. It was like. But I think they, I think they did a disservice by making yeah, him making comic him funny. Really. Yeah. Yeah, I know, Cause, but it's... Cause then, because now the audience is thinking, "Oh yeah, let's goof on people with beliefs." True, and that's not cool because the whole point of the movie is that the politicians are the one goofing on beliefs because they're abusing and manipulating. Yeah. Mm. So we shouldn't. The people who believe yeah. shouldn't be comic relief. The people who should believe who believe it should be sad. The ones who feel bad for it exactly. should be sad if anything. Exactly. Like, I think like it was because yeah. there's a lot of people that do think like that. Yeah, and when and to me, he came off as goofy in this movie. It's like those fifteen-year-old yeah. edgy atheists where it's like, uh, you can't believe it. It's like that's not the point. Like, you, yeah. just because someone believes in God doesn't mean they're terrible people Faith or they're important. not smart. It's just that you know you have to understand where they're coming from. And yeah, exactly. Faith it's, is important. That's whatever. What like, it's like, and... it's like, why is it filmed in like what? You know, I remember. I don't know. I was there was this one shot where he's like in the middle of the desert, and it's made to such a way that he's so minimal. He's like, oh, you you did it, you did it. It's yeah. like. Why is this funny? Like, why am I... Me, the funny part was when he was like, um, you must be Nissan Al-Gaib. And he's like, no, I'm not. He's like, oh, you're so humble. Just as... Just, I, I, that that like, was kind of funny. Like, like, like oh, you're like so like humble. Just like just like the Nissan Al-Gaib <laughs> yeah. would be, you know? Yeah, the Messiah would never admit he's a Messiah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, that, was, that was pretty good. Like, I did like that one a lot. Yeah. That's funny. Life of Brian is way better than Dune. Life, Life of Brian is way better than Dune. Life of Brian rocks. I agree. Monty Python, Meaning of Life, Life of Brian... And, and Holy, Holy Grail. Grail are literally the like top now, three comedies. Talk about casting in done. order. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk, talk about like, casting done right though. Rebecca Ferguson as the mom is I I can watch that. I can yeah. watch her all day. I agree. It was whatever. I find. No, I, mean, I thought she was just. She was just whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah but she didn't stand out or anything. Well, I she think she does stand out. Apparently, she, apparently she complained face. that she had to be pregnant the whole movie, and Denis was like, "Shut the fuck up!" Like, what do you mean? Did she not read the book? <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking know. Like, she, no, but she was actually pregnant. <laughs> she had to keep getting pregnant for like yeah, yeah. two years. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was okay. Um, Leia Seydu. She was there for like thirty seconds, and I, you know, or whatever. Right? I think the uh, what's the guy who played Fade? Oh, dude, he was awesome. I love him. Amazing. That that might be the best. Elvis. 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 Okay. Elvis. Oh, yeah. they shaved my hair. Yeah. That was that was a fucking good casting. That was great, dude. I loved him. He was so much fun to honestly, watch. Honestly, the Harkonnens are like the best casting. Give me the give me a movie about the Harkonnens, yeah. honestly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, Dave Bautista. Dave, Dave Bautista, bro. I love him in yeah, this movie, bro. Dude, yeah. Yeah, actually, I feel Denis Villeneuve gets. Dave Bautista as an actor. I feel oh, yeah, like yeah, he gets sure. him. You for know sure. what I mean? Because I, 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 to those two well, roles... This this is a good example of a guy who can be subtle. Blade Runner 2049, he was oh, yeah. the guy in the, the In the beginning, yeah. yeah. But that's that's an example of an actor. You know he's a fucking wrestler. Yeah. He's an actor who could do subtle. He's with The Rock. And person. he can do that super dramatic shit. Yeah, he's good. Because him in Dune is super believable. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Him in Blade Runner is like more su- a more subtle role than anything Timothy Chalamet's ever done. Mm. And come on, his role in fucking Blitter is so fucking subtle. It's subtle. He's but just it's a guy not in the there begin- long enough to compare it to an entire film. No, but it's not true. <laughs> it's it's not- of someone who's twenty four. <laughs> no, but like it's more <laughs> subtle than than in French Dispatch. Timothy Chalamet 
Well, like for his dispatch for like 30 minutes. Yeah, right? but that's also a Wes Anderson film. You, you're comparing, I feel you're comparing apples with the Bourne. No, Bautista's way better, dude. Bautista's, Bautista's way rules, better. Dude. I think Bautista's Bautista way sucks, better. Dude. Bautista rules. <laughs> He should play Paul. <laughs> Plus, really, really, Timmy Th- Tim- Timothy Chalamet plays kind of the Dude, same yeah. guy almost, I think. You think so? Yeah, a little bit. Mm. Timmy C? Yeah. Timmy C. I think a little bit, yeah. I don't know, dude. His uh, his four, to me, his four big movies are the, just just the four first movies I saw mm-hmm. with him. But Lady Bird. Little Women. Little Woman. Call Me By Your Name. Call Me By Your Name. Beautiful Boy? Yeah. Yeah. And those are four very different characters. I didn't watch any of those movies. They're very good. And Please I would, do. Please do. Add, and he's very good. He's excellent in all of them. Have you seen Bones and all? No, but we're supposed to review it. It's supposed to be fucking good. He's excellent in that. And then I would add... Uh... Okay, whatever. I don't know what I'm He's talking. in Interstellar, dude. I, okay, but no, no one cares about that um, part. The movie with Leonardo DiCaprio and uh, fucking Jennifer Lawrence... It's Adam McKay. Oh, oh, oh don't, look up, don't, don't look, look, look up. up. Don't look up. Don't look he's up. He's so funny in that. Dude, he plays just straight he's just, comic he's just in him. that movie. He's just that guy. And he's genuinely so good at it. He's, well, he just plays himself. Okay, okay. okay. I, I don't like. know what I'm saying then, but like, I don't know. I just don't feel like he's very good in, as Paul Trades. Like, no, I don't think... I think you agree. And I think, I think Dave, Dave Bautista is a better actor in general. Yeah, I think, I, think the, I think using Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet as the main leads for this film is a disservice because we're trying to create mythological, very operatic characters where, and this is no offense to Timothy Chalamet or Zendaya, but it becomes very TikTok-y. It becomes very, um, oh, it's star power. Look at all the stars are here. All the stars. Well, even in the I books, would, the books know. aren't very operatic either. I feel, I find mm, Zendaya's okay. character is more operatic in maybe, the movie. Okay, maybe bad, yeah. bad word, yeah. bad word to use, but like, no. it's very, um, it's like, oh, oh my God, Florence Pugh, Timothy Shaw. It's literally all no, the agree. it kids of. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I, I agree. would. I, I would. Agree. I would. I'm surprised The Rock's on this fucking movie. I Who? would repeat The, the Rock. Rock. Yeah, I would repeat everything you just said, but with offense. <laughs> That's the only thing I would change yeah. to your argument. With offense, offense to these actors. <laughs> well, somebody thought it was good at all. I agree. I don't think, think she's a good actor. I, I think, but I think, I think she could have been good in this role if she was written differently. Yeah, like if it wasn't if so much as Rue, if it wasn't if so, as Rue, if it wasn't so much about their relationship and yeah. their mm-hmm. dynamic, I think it would have been better. It feels yeah. it feels more subtle too. Yeah, like yeah. them alone, I don't think they can carry a three-hour fucking movie. I think Timothy not can, but this is not written for him. No, I don't think they can. Right. Well, but it, they're not supposed to carry a three-hour movie, bro. The, the the books don't have. It's not just him. The whole fucking book either. No, it's like a movie. It's the fucking first half of the movie. It's just them too. Yeah, I know. I know. So that's well, most of the movie is just them. Yeah, but there's a lot of. Other characters in the book that like are just as important, but mm-hmm. well, you know, got cut, <laughs> got cut. Yeah. And also, Aquaman is in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, talking about just star power. Star power, yeah, dude. Not. Aquaman. Even him, Duncan I don't feel Idaho. like he's that's a very well. Ca- I feel like Duncan Idaho could have been casted better. Too. I feel like Josh Brolin could have been Duncan Idaho. Is he's a good Josh journey Brolin. Alex. What? Yeah. Trainer guy. Oh, he's already in it. Yeah, he's already in it, but he could have been like one of those guys. You know he's I mean? very well casted. Personally. He's very well casted. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. But like, do we want to continue talking about casting? Because I got, an, I got. Keep going, keep going, bro. Okay, so because for me, I think this you have to go with when you try to create and adapt these huge books and these huge like stories. You have to go with people and characters that kind of transcend that whole TikTok or internet or pop culture vision because like when you watch lawrence of, the, of arabia okay like honestly a, a, a movie example lawrence of arabia right or david prowse as darth vader you don't think of david prowse you think of darth vader you think of you lawrence don't think arabia. of lawrence of olivia you think of lawrence of arabia he would have been a fucking amazing paul atreides lawrence, uh, lawrence olivia yeah or uh, emperor if he was still alive no no but i mean if he was young yeah right he would if, if he was young yeah. when the dune movie was made yeah, and I like he was like, like young, like in yeah, like, like in his twenties or whatever. In his twenties, I think he would. Be, he is the best possible Paul Trade. I would, like, yeah, that would. Have been and I'm not just solid. saying that because of the movie Lawrence Arabia. That would have been pretty solid. Yeah. You know who could have carried it as well? If it's Lawrence Arabia. Arabia is a better Dune movie than these fucking Dune movies. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. you, you said Lawrence Arabia. I was like, yeah, Dune part so, one. So I yeah. clearly, clearly, Frank yeah. Herbert was inspired by Lawrence of Arabia when writing this. Oh, Hondo P. For, yeah, yeah. For, for wait, which one came out first? Uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Uh, Lawrence of Arabia came out before Dune. Really? Dune, yeah, Dune was written like in, uh, what, in the 2010? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, so you have to go with uh, characters and actors that, and again, it just has to fit the bill. Unfortunately, Timothy Chalamet is growing up and building a career in a time where 
the internet and content creation trumps um, art. Right. So Timothy Chalamet is Gen Z, like us, <laughs> and he grew up in a time where the internet was like, whoa, this is where we can consume content. Mm -hmm. All of his digital footprints there. Mm -hmm. His entire career, content yeah. career path is all online. You can see it from YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, etc. It's all there for you. Young Timmy C, whatever, whatever. He's aware of the power that that holds. And unfortunately, that's also a curse because I find that we're not looking at Dune as Paul Atreides. I'm watching Dune with Timothy Chalamet in mind. And Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah, oh, that's a good point. Florence yeah. Pugh. Yeah, that's and it's good unfortunate. Point. And it's a huge disservice to this movie mm -hmm. because what I'm immersed in is not necessarily Timothy Chalamet for as much as he's a good actor. Unfortunately, I'm immersed in the experience of the visual, the cinematography, the sound, the escapism. The world. The world building yeah. of this Spectral. movie is the character that I like the most. Arrakis, yeah. Gady Prime, the production value and the production Caladan. design, Caladan, is the things, the, the, the ships, the tech, the costumes. The style, like the style, like the aesthetic. Yes, the aesthetic of this is my favorite character in the Dune movies. Yeah. Even the but aesthetic was better than the Lynch and the Yodorovsky stuff. Yeah, a, a role, a role this size should make the actor an actor. Leave should not make the role. Kind of like Uncut Gems with Adam Sandler. I lost completely track of Adam Sandler. Yeah. I was not watching Adam Sandler. Well, well, well. It's like it's like it's like. It's like um, so I have a lot of friends that are actors at, at right. work, and we were talking about oh, who's your favorite actor? My favorite actor of all time is Den uh, Denzel Washington. Mm. Every movie you you watch Denzel Washington, you don't even think about Denzel Washington the person. Right. His role overshadows every fucking movie. I think movie so, too. Maybe maybe not Macbeth a little bit. Even though his performance is oh, amazing. Oh, but there's so much time. gravitas that's brought there. Yeah. Macbeth? Oh, yeah, God, like his amazing. performance is amazing. Oh, dude. <laughs> but yeah. it's not, like, when I watch Macbeth, I'm not, like, thinking, oh, oh I'm here for Denzel Washington. Like, it's great, but, like, like I'm here to watch Macbeth, right? I like, am here for I Denzel, watch Training though. Day. I'm watching Training Day for Denzel. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, well, I see, that's, that's, that's what, um, look at Star Wars, right? I hate Star Wars. Yeah, me too. But that's one thing they do right. Transcend culture. Is that no? That they. they well, no. Hire. It's not about the actors. It's no, about it's, about, it's about their characters. Because they hire new actors. Yeah. The. Uh, 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 not other the, than the legacy ones. Not the prequel trilogy. Yeah, yeah, whatever. But the the original trilogy. Yeah. Uh, apart from Harrison Ford, right? He was already established. But Leia and Luke. No, he wasn't. Wasn't he? Uh, Harrison Ford. Yeah. yeah. He, oh, was he? Yeah, wait, no. So American Graffiti wait. Yeah, before that. Oh, did he? Okay, that I don't fucking big. know. Go on. But Luke and Leia, that was their that they were fresh actors, right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And yeah. then you look at the the newest trilogy with uh, Daisy Ridley, uh, John Boyega, Boyega, John Boyega, Oscar and... Isaac already had a, sure. but it was starting. But that that type of casting is what a movie like this needs. Neat. Is so so that the role over the, 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 actor the actor's actor personality. Actor over Here's the problem the, with yeah. Dune, though. It's not Star Wars accessible. Dune is the is the it predecessor. It shouldn't be one. It's the descendant. It's the it's the ancestor of Star Wars, right? Dune is whoa, George whoa, 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 whoa. Lucas's. Don't ever talk shit about Dune like that again. No, 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 okay. no, no, no. I'm He's sorry. No, Star, I'm saying Star, Star Wars without, stole everything. Star right? Wars, yeah. So George oh, Lucas yeah. was like, yeah. oh my god, let's make this movie, but more accessible to ten year olds. Well, that again, sucks. What, <laughs> yeah, there's some parts that are pretty cool. I hate Star Wars. Okay, hate but there's the world. Okay, look, the worlds are important. The Return okay. of Jedi is the best Star Wars. Movie Whatever. Ever. Point is. Point is, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into this now. Like, I mean, there are good and bad, but the point is, is that, um, fuck, where was I going with this? Um, Dr. Actors. Actors. Okay, yes. So actors. So that's the thing is with with Dune, it's this huge story that should, that does not. It's this huge story, this huge franchise, for lack of a better term. But unfortunately, it does not have enough consumers. Right. So because of that, you need to get the star power from these actors like Timothy Chalamet. Like, I'm sure. sorry. Let's be honest, and I'll be honest too. Well, if, I think I think even if they casted it better with other people that weren't as known, I think it would still do very well. No, it wouldn't have because so. Dune yeah, is not so. a story that's um, very. Yeah, we're talking about the movies, though. Not yes, 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 yes. No, but okay, but you can only watch Harry Potter was huge as movies because the books were huge. But isn't Denis Villeneuve enough star power to make movies? Like Unfortunately, I don't not. Think so, no. it, really? The first movie no, with Timothy so. Chalamet, Zendaya, and Aquaman made de worldwide. Now this is perhaps also because it went to streaming, but worldwide it made four hundred and thirty-three million dollars. Well, but like I mean, listen to this, Dune bro. One. Dune one. That's it. That's it. That's all it made. Really? Now I don't want to. I don't want to critique art based on its monetary value sure. and its pro. 
but you have like people have to understand that there yeah. is Dune is not Star Wars. It's not this accessible thing. You're talking about people turning into worms <laughs> and these jihads with AI and, like what? You've lost no offense, you've lost the tween audience good. that will go see this. Yes, but good. But good. <laughs> but if it's good, then sorry, this movie's not going to get made. Same with Blade Runner 20. Well, it did get made. I don't, I don't no, know what to but, tell you. Like, it actually but, got made. Yes, but it got made because of the star power. <laughs> but I don't think so, because mm. remember when Blade Runner came out? We watched Blade Runner? Yeah. Well, we, we didn't watch Blade Runner again, but when Blade Runner came out, we all watched it. Yeah. Everyone, everyone was saying that he should do Dune. Even before it was a plan. Everyone was like, oh, Dune, Denis should be the guy to make Dune. Yeah. And he actually fucking did it. If he would, yeah, if he would have yes. made Dune like Blade Runner, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. But everyone's saying, okay, Denis is fucking killing it with sci-fi right now. Yeah. Everyone, when when Blade Runner came out and everyone watched it, were like, oh, yeah. would it be amazing if he did yeah, Dune? Dune? If he Dune. was the one to do Dune? Yeah. Everyone's saying that. So I don't think I don't think you need Timothy Chalamet. And but I, no. I understand your point. Like, the actor is overshadowing the character. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. But I, I don't agree with you. I think I think this movie would still do very well if it. I, was... I don't think I don't think it would. No, not okay. nearly. As well. Not nearly because I'm it sorry, it but like it it's like uh, like look when you talk about comic to comic fans, right? Hardcore comic fans are gonna be like, you know, or just comic fans in general, like who's your favorite hero or who? What's your favorite story? Oh, I love uh, Batman. Zendaya. I love uh, I love Superman. But then like you talk to a seasoned mm-hmm. comic artist. Well, I enjoy Mouse. I enjoy Watchmen. Like as you go further, there's less and less people that know of these things. Dune is the predecessor, uh, the ancestor to a lot of sci-fi in popular, popular culture. Yeah, that's also because of Yodorowsky. Yes. And Lynch. Y- yes. Mostly Yodorowsky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mostly Yodorowsky. And that's because, and that's the thing, and, and th- but that's what people don't know. Yeah. And because people don't know that, and I'm sorry, Jodorowsky's Dune, the documentary, is not aired on CTV at fucking 8 p.m. No, yeah, 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 on primetime right. on Friday night. Yeah. You know what is, though? Star Wars Two right. or Avengers Infinity War, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know whatever. Prime but but time the thing is, is, I don't I don't want a Dune after the adaptation to be accessible like Star Wars. No, I know, but, but the problem studios is, it, it, studios but studios do. do. Studios. And because of that, you're falling into. And this was a great. Um, but are, are you, are you saying Ethan, uh, there was an Ethan Hawke interview recently that I saw? He was talking about uh, first reform, but then he go, went into further, and he was like, "Look, the unfortunate thing is, corporations took over the art before the art even grew." Yeah, like as soon as the art. 50, we you had but film he, you had art films for only about fifty years from nineteen oh one to like the fifties in America. From there, from the fifties till now, it's only been corporations and studios taking over franchises, art forms, technologies that you use are 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 trademark. Are you nuts? Like he but, was. But but here's thing, right? So are are you trying to say that? Because for me, I think Zendaya and Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. Don't like are not. Like they don't make the movie so accessible that it's now it's ex- it's as accessible as Star Wars. No, 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 it's accessible a heck of a lot more because of Timothy Chalamet's. Zendaya. I don't think that much. I think maybe a little bit. I think it is, dude. I don't think that much. I think. Look, I'm sorry, but a lot of these. Okay, so I teach high school. Um, there's a lot of uh, teenage girls that I teach. You think they wouldn't have watched it without Zendaya? Absolutely no, without Timothy Chalamet in it. Absolutely not. I'm with Lad. Absolutely man. not, dude. And I'm sorry. I don't want. I don't want to put my students and and people in boxes, and I don't want to stereotype girls or whatever it's just the fact or or guys or whatever the fact is look barbie if you told me amy schumer was gonna be barbie like the original plan was uh five years ago yeah i wasn't gonna watch that yeah but if you told me some way in fucking hell (laughs) no me either (laughs) but if you you told me some some greta gerwig margot robbie ryan gosling yeah but if you if you told me if you no but last if you told me two unknown actors were doing barbie and ken i will still watch it yeah but okay sure but the thing is greta gerwig uh, yeah, but you're if not if the chick from French Dispatch that was flirting with Timothy Stal- Tim- Timothy Chalamet was Barbie, yeah. I'd fucking watch that in a heartbeat. Okay, and who the fuck okay, is she? Okay, I never heard. Okay, of her. okay can you be honest, Gen Pop, dude? You have a let's movie be honest. Let's be honest. The only reason Barbie works is because of Greta Gerwig. Yes. Because otherwise, I don't know if the movie was going to be the same. Because honestly, the, whole, the original <laughs> plan. Okay, I'm tiny. I'm going to. Greta Gerwig or Margot Robbie? Greta Gerwig, Greta Gerwig. was. The yeah, director. obviously. So that the, like, if Greta Gerwig mm-hmm. still remained as director, maybe I'll watch it. But like. If Greta Gerwig was not the director and some just like normal, very com- competent enough director, to okay. Be directed, if okay, what, what, but here's the star power matters with these types of movies. The book, Greta, Greta Gerwig is not star power. We know she makes fucking good movies. That's yeah, the but thing. that's the only reason she we, knows. We, we, we and, 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 yeah. and let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest. The only yeah. reason Greta Gerwig no is known and 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 again, I'm gonna go into this, but this is my hot take with everything now recently in the way that I see the film landscape as an industry is 
the Tumblrfication and the Instagramification and the aesthetics of. I agree, but Greta, Greta Gerwig's not that, and no, that she, movie killed it. She's not that, but people have made it like that because so, of Barbie. Be, not just because of Barbie. Little Women, Lady Bird are very not not like, not like Timothy Chalamet and Zendaya though. Dude, Timothy Chalamet is the poster child for. La- no, no, I know, but but Greta Gerwig is nowhere near on the level of Timothy Chalamet and, Gre- and, and Zendaya. That's what he's saying. But, before Barbie. That's what I'm saying, though. But Barbie still made all that money. They didn't need to have a star power director like that. No, they no, did. No, but they had Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. So it, it just helped even more. So the thing is, is like, look, Barbie would have big, been big regardless. But the thing, because it's Barbie, everyone knows what Barbie is. Children were going to go watch the movie, okay? Like, you know that. But the thing is, is that you have to be aware that, unfortunately, the biggest consumers of, like, video games and toys, for some fucking reason, are millennial adults. Yeah. Okay, so you have to get their interest a little more than just it's a Ghostbusters movie. But but everyone you know who's I mean? interested in Zendaya and Timmy Taylor's movie is not millennials. And well. but no, but it's the, like Gen the Z, Gen Z Zoomers. That, well. But the reason exactly. for that's that is that's why they hire them for Dune. That's, that's the thing is that Gen Z is going to be the next consumer. Uh, class. Oh, they're going to be like in ten years, they're going to be us, basically. What I'm trying to say. Okay, I understand. What us? No, no, this is a, like Gen Z is us. Well, I'm, I'm not Gen Z. Oh, I'm Gen Z. But point is, don't share with me again. Right? <laughs> point is, is like I'm noticing this now. It's ninety six. I feel like they changed every year. So, changed every year. Yeah, anyway, that's so anyway. culturally, I'm a millennial, okay? Yeah, I'm not. You guys too. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, culturally, I'm not a millennial, dude. I've spent too much time online. You, you, you love Scorsese. Yeah, you are. <laughs> you Shut up. Scorsese? Good fellas. Okay, if you went to... <laughs> if you taught in Laval... You like the Sopranos, if you, Yeah, okay, if you taught... Shut Laval, up, dude. If you taught in Laval, you would... Uh, all the no, because you have that. Mo- like, even though you're born after, that's just a date. Culturally, culturally speaking, culturally, Gen Z, yeah. hold up. No, culturally, you're millennials. We are. We're zillennials. Zillennials, yeah. exactly. Thank you. Because we've witnessed the change. <laughs> no, 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 because two. and that's no, but sociologists no, yeah. have w- people. It's people who've witnessed the bridge from VCRs to streaming. We've all seen it. Some of my students have not owned a VCR, and that's important when consumers. And, sorry, not consumers. But what? you own the VCR. I do. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so you're a millennial. No, but yeah, because well, millennials, yeah, millennials. My parents owned it, dude. Millennials grew up enough. Bro, for you that grew up to listening be... to Lip Biscuit, bro. You're no, a millennial. I never listened to Lip Biscuit. Like I, I, <laughs> like, I don't know. I you like Lip Knot? You you play you play stuff out. on Hold a daily Check basis, bro. <laughs> Slip Knot, Breaking Benjamin, Linkin Park, Hybrid. That's theory. millennial shit. You think Zoomers listen to that shit? No. Yeah, they do. It blew up on TikTok. Deftones is the biggest. Before TikTok, before TikTok came out, you think Zoomers listen to that? No, exactly. But 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 but, but that answer. No, but you're wait, welcome. You no, thank you. End of conversation. <laughs> yeah, I feel like you haven't said much about Dune. Dude, I don't think the there was this much to talk he about. wants us to break <laughs> stuff right now, right? <laughs> it was more of just a okay science fiction movie. <laughs> <laughs> we got some deep emotional yeah. connection. To what this was movie. your favorite part? I like the face, man. <laughs> that's my favorite part. What was your least favorite part? Uh, I like when Paul fucked the worm. That was fun. <laughs> in the pond? Yeah, hell yeah, cool. dude. It's like the popcorn bucket. Yeah, the only water in the entire world, and he's fucking a worm in it. <laughs> Sexy, thanks. I mean, I do the same thing, dude. Yeah. Anyway. Okay, very cool. <laughs> 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 But yeah, anyway, all this to say, star power for these types of movies matter because I'm sorry, but it's too weird of a movie sure. to sell without these people. But it, the the book's weird. The, this movie's not that weird. No, it's not that weird. But the only reason it's not that weird is because it was finally adapted to a palatable audience, like an audience that could palatable. It's that, not that weird yet. It's not that weird it's, yet. It's still like it's still like visually, stylistically, I think it's still like better than most movies. Like, this look, is not this is not the even level, you know. No, okay, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, but all this to say, look, the movie on its like it's it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I had fun, but there are these things where I'm like, hmm, thinking about this more and more. It's like, yeah, there there are some issues with it on a just on a story level. There is a lot to take in immediately, and to your right. point where you if you did the time jump of like you just like he just ra- writes quickly. You know how they had like those journals like in the first one, like journals like whatever holograms that explain shit. The, yeah, yeah. yeah story like he could he could have just made like a little Timmy Timmy C vlog and been like. I'm now a fucking... Hey, guys, I'm going through the sand uh, sand thing. Well, it's going to be tight. Okay. I don't know if I'll survive. Okay. okay, you know how you hate Marvel? Yeah. Okay, you know Marvel. how you hate Marvel? So, look, Marvel Marvel is, you know, the, the, the antithesis to, like, every Denis Villeneuve movie. But the thing, what they did well is, actually, honestly, of all things, the way they introduced Spider-Man was perfect. It was like, we all know who the fuck Spider-Man is. We all know how he gets his powers. So, the only... The way in Spider-Man is introduced is just... 
oh my god, guys, like, uh, I'm gonna meet the Avengers. That's so cool. And then meets the Avengers. Oh, I fucking hate that though. No, but we're already a, we already all know and we already established. Yeah, I know we all know. Spidey, Spidey, you know, and it's it's and that's the. Point. Not everyone knows how his son becomes a god emperor, worm yeah, god but, of the but, universe. But, but 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 the thing is though is that whole thing of I need to be Fremen <laughs> is already established in the first movie. Yeah. So yeah, it does. Time jumped into like I'm not yeah. Fremen. I mean, we said that before, like an yeah. hour ago. If if, yeah, if, yeah. if they just show if we just showed up at the at, in the Fremen camp in the south. Yes. But that's, the movie there. that's the thing. So like again, yeah. it's all that, but all that stuff. I think it needs. There was a lot. I think there was just a lot of like, there was too much, in it. Like I don't know. I don't know I'll shut up. But yeah. Okay, so Nick, what did you think of the movie? I didn't think it was that good, dude. I didn't think there was that Why? much to say. I mean, what about camera work and shit? Camera work, I thought it was very normal. I mean, for like a blockbuster movie like that, the tech is cool. Like the shots are nice, but they're not more. Nicely mm-hmm. composed than any other movie. Yeah. There's not more fucking like effort put into the shots or the composition or anything like that. Music is what you expect. Some oh. Lady. <laughs> we haven't even fucking talked about the fucking music yet. I love the it. fucking song. Yeah. Da, da, da. Bro, every time it comes on, I want to kill myself. Yeah, <laughs> Why? I loved it. It's so annoying. I think that's the point. No. It's like, it's like, um, so in Game of Thrones, back to Game of Thrones, right? Do you remember like in the later seasons of Game of Thrones? Every time uh, Daenerys, like her dragon showed up, they, they played the same fucking song? No, I don't remember that. Dude, it's it's so fucking annoying. Don't play it. I'm not going right. to play it. But it's so fucking annoying. And every time something happens in this movie, it's like, da, 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 da. I was like, oh, stop, stop, stop playing that fucking song. Like, I hate that fucking song so much, bro. Yeah, I also... Yeah, it got old. But like, that's... <laughs> The desert, you know, yeah. that's the whole movie. It's the same thing over like, and over I, what, and over. Like what, what I what I wanted, I wanted for music. I wanted some Sumerian loop, da 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 da, or something like that. You know, or some just real a different melody, different some, riff, different yeah. song. Though. Or yeah. just the fucking worm noises. Yeah. Yeah. I think what could have been cool is corrupting the soundtrack more and more as he falls into corruption. Yeah, that, could that could have been like like where oh, it's like it's... Mr. wants to make the movie accessible, bro. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no, no, but like that's like on. a super high art concept you just said. Like <laughs> that's something I would do in, in a, that's something we would do in electroacoustics class. Yeah, what do you yeah, mean? but it would be cool. It'd be, <laughs> you know, it'd be cool if uh, if some fuck if Lin, uh, Hey Yao Lin fucking directed the movie instead of Denise Like, I don't yeah. know. but anyway, hey, so Yo, I think. Dude. Ooh. Oh. The whole thing would be blue, but I I, I do yeah. I do think <laughs> everything would be blue. I actually I actually didn't mind the soundtrack as much. I actually liked that. I hate it it's it's like, once or twice, yeah. maybe not a thousand. Oh, times. it's every fucking five minutes. Yeah. yeah, give it to me when he rides the worm. Give it to me when, when he, he nukes the planet. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> the nuke the planet would have been sick, dude. Yeah. yeah. Now, when it comes to shots, though, there are a few shots. Like, there's a lot that's, like, very, uh, tech, like, very just normal, basic. But some of the shots at the end of the movie, where it's, like, for example, like, when Baron's trying to walk up to the staircase, and you're, yeah, you're like, that was, that was probably the best part of the movie. That was sick. That was cool. Yeah, yeah but from, like, that. the camera work and, like, like the technical mm. achievement that they were doing in other spots, yeah. you'd think that it would be elevated a little bit more than just you, you know, they're, they're mostly static shots. There's not much fucking movement. There's nothing crazy going on yeah. beyond, you know, a nice image. But I mean, how, how long can you look at a fucking a pasture, you know? Yeah. And it's just like a desktop fucking wallpaper, you know? You want to see some dynamics, some fucking movement, mm-hmm. something. I, I wasn't feeling that from this. Do you think? Do you think, as as someone who's kind of like into this, do you think that um, the lack of well, like sand is pretty dynamic as like a tech, like as a as a thing, as like mm-hmm. an object, it's pretty dynamic. Do you think because of the scope of the planet, do you think like let's say you were the one directing it, how 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 would you try and film the dynamicism <laughs> mm-hmm. of sand? I mean, oh, I would, dude, sand in the wind, yeah, like that. Kind of a texture. I have an answer. Mm-hmm. Sand would be more on top. I have an answer for that mm-hmm. that I that I have that I had been thinking about since the first dune. Okay. Um, because you hear. I'm so just much. actually curious to just know your guys' thoughts. You you hear so much about spice. And how it's used for space travel. Cilantro. But primarily, it's a psychedelic used in rituals for the Fremen, right? Right. Yeah. That's what we learned about spice. Yeah. So I always 
And, like, the only hint of that we get is Paul having these visions when he's exposed to the flames. Right. But I think what would be cool is the closer the Fremen, or the closer that anyone gets to the spice fields, like in the desert, because there's not spice everywhere, right? The spice fields. The mild, mild hallucinations. <laughs> like in Midsommar, yeah. where there's warping in the camera, yeah. there's movement where it shouldn't be. Stuff like that. Hints of the spice being more and more abundant in the air, in the sand, in the, in the environment. Anything like that, just to give the desert a bit more dynamic. Yeah, well, because, character as well. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, like you said, everything's beautiful, mm -hmm. but it's the same static shot every time. Yeah, it's very so to, horizontal also. To, you need some vertical yeah. stuff. You need some fucking yeah. contrast between... That's why cactuses are, in, are on Earth. It's just to give the desert some verticality. It's planning. <laughs> <laughs> See, God is, God is an artist. He thought of composition even in the desert. <laughs> he should have directed the Dune movies. Dude. But I, I... God... <laughs> but no, I I, th I I think that's I think that would have been an easy way, and an effective way, and I think an interesting way. I want to I just add want, some energy to. The I just desert. want to see more of this. Yeah. More 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 sand in the wind, kind yeah. of flowing. That's you know? it. And the closer you get to the spice, the more kind of psychedelic. They did it in the first one. That kind of sand, kind but of. But it's just like... kind of sparkly. Oh, but it's, yeah, it's, it's mixed with spice though. That's what I find that cool. That sparkle. No, but that's what I mean. Like the the sparkle, they could have done so much more. Like they could have. Yeah. They could have done, like, those sparkles could have been, like, you, you approach the spice field and you start seeing the sparkles a bit. Yeah, and yeah, the, yeah. The deeper you oh, get sure. in the spice field, the more those sparkles all of a sudden mm -hmm. start organizing. Well, are, 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 you, are you trying to say because there's more concentration of spice in the I'm spice field? I'm saying because it's a psychedelic, and yes, because it's yeah. more concentrated. Well, the concentration of spice is the same. Around the planet? Around the planet, yeah. So why do they call them spice fields? Because that's where they have their machines to mine it. Oh, that's dumb. You do kind of see that the first time he sees the spikes. You get like the bass kicks in and the bitch is a bit Yeah, forward. yeah. But you never see that again. But it's, yeah. and it's, it's such a, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like if some, like, like I said, like mid Midsommar is a good way to yeah, introduce well, psychedelics with the yeah. swirl well, pattern. Well, Dark by um, Alistair Quack yeah. too. Yeah. Where's that, that, that subtle, like, just a subtle, like, like, you know, waviness. Yeah. When the, when the girl is ripping herself off from the floor there. So cool. Very cool. Shit like that is what this movie, I think, is missing mm -hmm. to add some energy to those desert scenes where otherwise it's, it gets pretty bland, I find. Or in, anything beyond, like, character. Yeah. You need some kind of situation. Or even, or even like, some desert mysticism that's not really yeah. in the book, but, like, I would like to see, like, some genie shit, you know? Some real mm -hmm. fucking old Arabic shit come out, yeah. you know? In yeah, the like, desert. Like you said, you know, like Star Wars, but they did it fucking right. They have all mm -hmm. kinds of little... Sticks and fucking cats that's sticking out of the, the desert, and you yeah. got people standing there. You got two suns in the sky to kind of break up this fucking straight line. I, I mean, I, that's the thing too is that like, look for for as much as you don't like Star Wars, there is that world building that really and just like the the um, the character that is built upon in that desert of Tatooine, it, it it works much more, and you're you're much more. It's much more lived in. Whereas here, it's like again, they're all campsites, and it's like. Okay, go next. Oh, okay, we're gonna go on the worm next. Mm -hmm. So I think that that also kills the whole. Like it's very, it's very linear. It's very flat, yeah. liminal. But like Lee was saying, it's like, it, well, it's not liminal. But like, not but, liminal? I don't think it's not liminal. No. It's just a fucking desert. Uh, an empty place doesn't automatically make it liminal. What no, but I thought it was, I thought it was very transitory. Like yeah, something in between. No, I thought it was pretty yeah. liminal. It didn't feel liminal though. Really, I don't feel so. You're talking to the king of liminality over here, right? <laughs> but, but uh, no, for me, it's like what we were saying before. It's like, I feel like the first act of the movie could have been condensed to like a 10, 20 minute thing of them going to the South. Because really, like in the book, they spend three years in the South. Right. You know, it didn't take that long for them to get there. How did they do it in the book, though? Did they just go from three years to three years? Or was it's just chapters and chapters? It's chapters and chapters okay, in, yeah. in the South, yeah. Okay. Like, they do a lot of shit in the South. Mm hmm you know, and uh, I feel like they could have just had that that transitory liminal whatever to the south, 20, 10, 20 minutes. Then the rest of the fucking movie takes place in the south, and mm. then they and then they could have all that dense bullshit in it. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I think Kodorak would have done it better. That's what I think. Oh yeah, I, I think, think so too. But I think, think... I, I think it would have been less story again and less character, less less. Yeah, stuff but I think I think Yordorowski especially. Mm -hmm. 
his way of making movies with all those symbols and all that shit. Like a ritual and ceremony. Very ritual, very symbolic. Mm-hmm. It caters very well to the books. Yes. That kind of stuff, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about technical mm-hmm. aspects and stuff. I, I just picked up my notes. That's why I'm bringing it up. But um, when Paul and the Fremen and the Worms are attacking the city mm-hmm. in an on Arrakis, what's the city called? The well, they don't attack the city. They, they attack the... Um, the capital. Wherever the capital, yeah. Arrakin or something? Uh, is it, is it something like I think, that. yeah, it's like Arrakin. Okay, yeah. anyways. When they attack, when they converge on that location, there's this one shot where it's like a a drone shot over... Yeah, like an establishing shot? The city. No, it's like midway through the battle. And it's... I think it's... There's a, there's a shot that's almost the same when the Harkonnens attack in the first one. <laughs> And it's a parallel shot to that in the second one. It's a drone shot through the city. But I found it stood out so much for the rest of the film. It's because dynamic. it's so obviously CGI. Oh, really? Okay. To me, instantly. I was, dude, it looked so bad. It looked like the fucking... This is a throwback to some classic YTV Canadian cartoons. It looked like the fucking intro to Reboot. Hell yeah. Dude, it's a worst show of all time, dude. I you don't like show. Reboot? I love me, Reboot, bro. Dude, it, it was like... The second I saw it, I was like, why the fuck did they just insert this five minute, 2000s quality 3D animation scene into this movie? Game loading it was on a so fucking weird. Like, it was literally like a weird drone shot, but it looked terrible, I think. I'm surprised mm-hmm. none of you You're talking noticed. about the shot where, like, it cuts to Chani on the ground killing people and her mask comes off? I don't know. I don't think anyone, I don't think any important characters in that scene. Okay. It just, it swoops through the city, and then there's an opening in the structures, and there's a big yeah. battle. It's like a, a wall of death at a metal show. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, okay, yeah. So yeah. then there was that. <laughs> and yeah. I, I didn't realize Chani was there. I was too focused on Reboot. Yeah. No, dude, Reboot fucking slaps. But yeah, that was my least favorite shot. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean... Just because it looked goofy as hell. Are, are we doing shots now? We're doing our favorite shots. I, I don't know. I, I my notes are pretty much exhausted. <laughs> you have any other thing else to say about the movie? Nothing good. No, you're good. What about you, Laz? Not good. You know, yeah, favorite shots. Favorite shots. Or least too, I guess. We got a least one. There's yeah, no, I, I th- yeah. there's no least for me. Mm-hmm. They're they're all just so normal and whatever. Yeah. It's just very just filmmaking. You know, nothing super mm-hmm. artsy. My favorite shot though. Um, it's either like in the throne room where Har- Baron Harkonnen is trying to climb up. Yeah. Like, I loved it because it was so hellish. It was so red and it was like this. Yes. And I loved it. It's true. And it was very, it was very, um, it's the w- one part of both these movies that I felt very epic in that scene. Mm. I felt very like it felt like a fable, you know. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. it felt like it. It felt yeah. like you know, like Paul Trees conquers death kind of thing. You know, very. Yeah. Uh, it felt like if there's one part of this movie that's a space opera, it's that fucking scene. Right. You know, it was uh, like the <laughs> the etchings that go with Paradise Lost, like that that demon that hell. Heaven, yes, that yes, yes, yes. But it, not just that, but also the feeling of it. It just felt very. It just felt like very ethereal like i don't even know how to say it just the way that was filmed it was like a renaissance painting or, yeah. or, or like or like an, like like some sort of like war painting from back in the day i loved it yeah. that or there's one shot where in the desert where they're like on a on a sand dune and chani and her friend like yeah. um they're looking at paul but they're both kind of looking at him like this i thought it was sick and it's centered it was, it was just very nice that's that's my favorite shots now you uh, I'm gonna go with basically that transition uh, that I said earlier f- mm. from Fade Rautha in the um, in in the in that, that, Gady like, Prime. Yeah, in Gady Prime before he goes That's into like the gladiator match. Yeah, I really like that whole like that sequence. Was that was really sick. That was really awesome. But again, uh, to Dante's point, also the um, like just the Baron trying to climb up that uh, set of stairs is really yeah. solid. Yeah, uh, I think. My least favorite shot, I said. My, my favorite shot is either... They're both... I mean, probably, like, uh, my top ten favorite shots are all on fucking Getty Lee Prime or whatever the fuck Getty it's called. Getty Prime. <laughs> Getty Lee Prime. <laughs> uh, it's either one of the establishing shots where you get a visual of of the planet 
but not because one of them you get a visual of the planet and the, their main castle, their building. Mm. And the second I saw, it, I was like, oh fuck, fucking Aesir and died years ago. That was better. Yeah, this is a different building that they showed and established in Shadow that I, I thought was really cool. Otherwise, it's the interior of Leia Sidu following Elvis. That was sick. In that yeah. super deep hallway. That was yeah. limitless. Yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. Limitless. super high Shit. ceiling, just black. Yeah. That I thought was really cool. Just because it was so different from everything else. Because everything else was so bright and sand. It was a good break. You know, yeah. he did, he does those good breaks in both movies. The first movie, the the nice little break was um, when um, Paul Trades and his mom get captured by that little uh, dro- like drone, like a uh, scout. Yeah. Um, the dragonfly aircraft, yeah, the yeah. dragonfly, and they're just there, and there's like green lights and all that sort of more techie yeah. stuff. That was a good break in that movie. That's, but this one's a good break in this movie. Yeah, I think uh, I did have a least favorite shot though. I think it was uh, when I was watching Jedi Prime when it's uh, just establishing the fucking gladiator match. Yeah, I hated that. Just like a triangle, fucking like the bird's eye view of all the oh, you know. I well, I think it was just a static aerial, and it's just the triangle stadium. White triangle in the middle, yeah. black and okay, kind of sucks. Fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, and my favorite shot, though, I thought was uh, like I think when Paul is being chased at one point, and we're in the desert here, and it's uh, like a long shot with kind of a rock or something, and you just see one of the Harkonnen guys like floating down like this at the very beginning. Just there. cool, yeah. yeah. Just a nice cool. I, I like those guys. They reminded me more of like your kind of classic sci-fi kind of stuff. Yeah. Julia, shut up. I thought it was fun. I, I like that yeah. shot. Mm. Other than that, I mean, I, I thought this one was pretty standard, this fucking movie. Yeah. Visually-wise, I wasn't stunned by visuals. Right. More like spectacle and the okay. actors in it, but not so much the the film itself. See, that's why, like I said before, that's why I like the first one. Because the first one, I like the visuals. Mm-hmm. I like the, he had the Denis Villeneuve flair a little bit to it, yeah. you know? Not as much as I wanted, mm-hmm. but still, this one I felt like none. Yeah, I mean, like, just like, Two seconds into Saturday Night Fever, and there's a hundred more shots that I like than fucking. <laughs> you know, because there's so much fucking action and like you feel the camera fucking moving. This yeah. is like, okay, yeah. Hit us with okay, your score yeah. there. Yeah, this I'm giving it. Uh, wait, wait, we're doing letterbox reviews. Go right into it. We'll give ours first. Yeah. Give ours first. Do we even do that? Oh no, let's just do ours first. I already, I already said it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm giving Dune two. A good, like, six and a half, probably. Wow. Something like that. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I liked it more than the first one for, like, palatability, but, like, craft or film work, I didn't think was there. Maybe storytelling a bit, but it was more, like, humanist character-building stories, and Mm -hmm. I'm not into more character or, like, plot-driven like that. I prefer more the aesthetics and the, the, the feel of the craft. In the movie, mm. that didn't really work for me. The second one, the first one, more than that one, but uh, I don't know. It, it was it was a fun movie, but it wasn't like incredible. Yeah, for me. It, was, it was more standard, more just your normal. And like, I liked it. Leaving the movie, the more you think about it, the less I think I liked it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, same. Mm. Um, I meant to I meant to go back on our first Dune episode and, and check what I gave the first Dune. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So I'll have to adjust. I think uh, I remember. You think you remember? I think I remember. Yeah. Did you you want to hear it before or after? Yeah, before. I think it was five and a half. Okay. I was going to give this one a five. Four and a half, oh, okay. five yeah. out of ten Whoa. is yeah. what I would give this one. Yeah, I think it was I think it was pretty much just an average movie for me, if not a little less enjoyable because of what it should have been. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you gave... Yeah, I... Th- I you, this this is a I think I think you probably gave Dune five one is higher. Perfectly average. Yeah, <laughs> five is just a perfectly average movie. I think you gave Dune one a bit higher. You think? Yeah, because we were talking about how, in the first review, we were talking about how, it would have been like a nine or ten out of ten if if Denis kept with his style more. Oh, so I guess I like this one less then. Maybe. Or I'll watch both of them again and wow. I'll let you guys know. But right now I would give this a five probably. Okay. Whoa, I'm giving this like an eight. Yeah. Well, that's because the other... Yeah, man. I, I, I liked it. I mean, I still had a lot of fun says, watching uh, it. Says the Marvel uh, Star Wars kid. Yeah, well, well, you know what? 
sue me. I had fun. It was yeah. a good time. Call my yeah. lawyer. But there, <laughs> but like I th- again, I think all the themes were you know they were explained. They were ex- not explained. They were explored. It was there. Everything was there for setup for number three. So Doom Messiah better be good. You know what I mean? Like everything, mm. all mm. the ingredients are there. I mean, like, like, like we were saying, up. like we felt like the first one was pro- prologue. Second one's kind of prologue. We think Doom Messiah is going to be prologue too because the real story happens in the fucking third one. Yes, book. but the thing yeah. is, again, is now the reason I'm giving it eight. So I put on Letterbox four point five. On yeah. 10. Okay. That's on four point five on five. I was incredibly immersed watching this movie, like immediately. I, I don't know why, but I, maybe I just not get the same. I'll be honest. I think you guys watched it on a bad screen. No, I mean, I was immersed, yeah. but... Yeah. I was immersed, man. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, that first act, fucking montage PowerPoint, oh, this is everything Paul did. I was like, all right, yeah, but I'm that's over bad it. filmmaking, too. Yeah, but that yeah. brought me out of the rest yeah. of the movie. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, look, I mean, to be honest, like, I, can, I can see where that can get old really quick, and that might have, like, for, but for me, that didn't necessarily yeah. drop my enjoyment of this one. Mm-hmm. And again, it's, it's... I didn't read the books fully, so I can't necessarily... You know, but yeah, no, for me, it was like a solid eight. Like, I really enjoyed it. I, I had fun. It was immersive. I, I like, it, it's cool. It's space, dude. It's like, it's different. It's, you know, it's... I mean, space, bro. You're on the desert the whole time. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. I think, anyway. I, I mean, I, I know I have a tendency to be a contrarian. So because it's so popular, I might like it less by default. Yeah. Mm. But I think also, to me, like, uh, the more, the more I think about it, I, I am with you there on this one, Nick. The more I think about this one... The more I'm like, mm, maybe there could have been a bit better things. Like I do prefer now this one, the first one before this, mm-hmm. the second one. I'm gonna change it probably. It's probably gonna become like a four on five for Dune, at uh, part two. Mm. Um, but uh, but yeah, no, it's still for me. It was still a, I had a good time. I, I watched it and it, I had, there was a fire wall. Yeah, you know, and right. I got back and I was like, oh yeah, great, we're back in here. I, I could spend more time there. I yeah. think that almost would have helped me. Interesting. If there was a if there was a, if I had a break between. If I if like I watched the movie, and then Paul rode the worm, and then I had a break, and then I came back and watched the rest of the movie, I think I actually would have liked it more. <laughs> but I, I also think because because it's Denis Villeneuve, I haven't read Dune either, but I I know of the reputation of Dune, yeah, and I know the scope of it, and I was expecting a lot from this. I think yeah. that's also why yeah. I'm being so hard. <laughs> but like just hearing the way you guys are so like invested in this story and the motives of his characters and the whole lore of everything it's completely the wrong medium then for this thing like you can't it needs to be a fucking it. hbo yeah. series but it'd be it, it's, it's literally like trying to adapt the Silmarillion. yeah it's not you like can. Can. It's yeah you can't just the that's, just a, that's just a text yeah book. yeah exactly but that's what it sounds like dune is too yeah it yeah. fucking is it's well. more of just a lore or history book mm-hmm. or like trying to yeah. Yeah. with a with a solid yeah. narrative yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like the Silmarillion has I don't believe, like, see, the thing is, like, Silmarillion Think of it in between Lord of the Rings and Silmarillion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what Dune looks like. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Silmarillion is yeah. not very like, if, t- if Tolkien would have woven everything, if if Tolkien would have done <laughs> everything that's in the Silmarillion, if he would have wrote that into the Lord of the Rings, the yeah, of the Rings exactly. trilogy, yeah. that, that's what Dune is, that's what the books are yeah. for. Like. Yeah, and, and there's there's still, like, eight of them. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah, and w- which, it, it, like you said, it's it's just the wrong medium. It doesn't, yeah. it didn't work yeah. properly. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. Like, so out of ten, um. So I'm gonna say like where we're just saying I'll tie it to what we we're just saying. It's like for the, after the first movie, I thought that maybe he could do it. He could maybe do it because the first movie was pretty. Like I thought the movie was first movie was very accurate to the books. The changes in the first movie compared to the books were like good changes that I feel like augmented the movie. This one, no. Um, I'm with you. I give it like six point five seven out of ten. Mm-hmm. I gave the first Dune an eight. I remember that for yeah. sure. Um, and the more like like we're saying, the more I think about this movie, the more I don't like it. The more I think of the first one, the more I like it. That's, on, on that's rewatch, yeah. I did like the first one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I watched, I, like I rewatched the first one like two days before we went to go see the second one, mm-hmm. and I liked it less the second time I saw it. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And and you know, I think I think if this was a show like a Game of Thrones, where right. a lot of seasons, mm-hmm. where every season was like a half of a book. And get an hour per episode. I think it could... And if Denis Villeneuve... Because I do think Denis Villeneuve is the right... Him and Yodorowsky are the right people to do this. For very different reasons. Right. You know? 
I think Gary Rossi should have been a producer on this, at or least. Or set design, production design. Something. He, something. the, the, the your, there needs to be yeah. more, your, more Yordorowski influence but on this. I don't think that would ever, Yordorowski is too much of a character to have on set yeah. to do a, to, to not be in charge. You know what no, I mean? but you can get him to, you know, do some concept art or whatever. Something. He's already done it. Just give Denny the fucking book. I'm sure Denny has it. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. I'm sure yeah. he has it. But, but, you know, I think, yeah, I just think when I, after leaving, watching this one, I was like, the first Dune gave me high hopes that this could be, um, you know, adapted into a yeah. film medium. Mm-hmm. Second one is it, every every the second one. No, I don't, I don't think so anymore. Like, it's still like listen, it's still very like I still think it's a good movie. I think most people are gonna be very satisfied with this movie. People who watch who read the books are not. You know, that's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, that's why I give. I guess, uh, I'll give it. I'll give it a seven. Just are you, are you like sci-fi then? You're big into sci-fi. I love sci-fi. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I okay. love sci-fi. Just curious. And and the thing about sci-fi. As opposed to fantasy, like Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's still, like, Lord of the Rings and fantasy still have this aspect to it, but sci-fi, it's, like, super augmented. So, all, most sci-fi, like, good sci-fi, like, artistic literature, you know, like, very, like, well-done sci-fi, is inherently incredibly political. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like, hyper, yeah, yeah. hyper political, you know? Mm-hmm. Not only that, not only that, the best sci-fi <laughs> explores the human condition. Yeah. Best. Like, that's when you know it's good sci-fi is when... Uh, not really. Yeah, I know what you mean. So, yeah. No, I know, I know what you mean, but like it's it's di- that tied to it, you know. But but the thing is, the, the, the politics and sci-fi are like insanely important. And anytime you talk about politics in a deep manner, it'll inherently be a hu- it, it touch and okay. talk about human. Okay, okay. What's the I would po- almost I would almost say the opposite. What I think sci-fi deals primarily with the human condition, which is inherently political. Ooh. Not. I, I think you've dug deep into a lot of sci-fi. Have you watched a lot of Star Trek? No, but, but that's I've such read a... a lot of sci-fi. Okay. Well, Star Trek is also very wordy as a show. No, but it's super political. Like they talk about yes, trans rights. They talk about but that's the all thing. these sort of things. Yeah. yeah. But that's the thing. They talk like they talk about it. It's it's very um, dialogue based. Well, but I mean, but it's part of it. Like it's a big part yeah, of it. Yeah, that's yeah, what I'm trying I to say. Whatever, whatever way it is. Yeah. yeah. But even then, I think that's still human issue. That's what, that's what I mean, every every yeah. political issue at the end of yeah. the day is a human issue. I think issue. politics yeah. and the human condition are two sides. Oh yeah, they are. They are. But yeah, but yeah. but they talk about in sci-fi. They talk about politics a lot. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. and justice and you know equal rights and all that sort of stuff. You yeah. know, it's it's very political stuff. And they always reference you know politics in the real world a lot. You know, a lot more than fantasy at yeah. least. You know? Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Fantasy is. I find fantasy is is more of a a moral discussion. Yeah, like large scale ethics. L- like yeah, moral ethics, large scale ethics, like you said. Yeah. And sci-fi is more of a political ethics and personal ethics and yeah, and yeah. yeah, that's what I find. Um, should we see what Letterbox has to say? Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. You have the pre- you have you pre- I want to read a good review though. Like I said, I just I prepped some, so you yeah you can you can scope some. Just, out. just to see, just to see what like maybe someone who really likes it. Well, I want to see what they say about it. You know. So I got one. It was removed by a moderator. So sorry. Curse. But here we go. Half star. It's a long one. Rating F. By the Road Critic, a pro member whose favorite movies are Twelve Angry Men, <laughs> Seven Samurai, Rebecca, and Lord of the Rings. So oh, there we go. Okay. So. Um, I don't know what Rebecca is. 1940. Have you guys heard of it? Nope. Alfred Hitchcock. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. His list seems pretty, oh, uh... I think it's, yeah. It's, it's very, uh, I'm born in the wrong generation kind of thing. Yeah. Maybe, I don't know how old he is. Maybe, he, maybe he's 100 years old. <laughs> Anyways, he says a horribly overrated sci-fi sequel, which exceeds all the fall, all the awful qualities of the its terrible predecessor. I think calling a movie horribly overrated when you review it on the day of its premiere is a little bold. You are the one rating it. it. Yeah. You're the <coughs> first to rate it. Yeah. Uh, once again, story is profoundly dull, pacing lethargic, characters shallow and inconsistent, scripts cheap, and acting apathetic. So far, I would disagree with all of his points. I'd say so, yeah. Yeah. Pacing lethargic? This movie's so fast compared to the first one. Yeah. We don't go anywhere. But lethargic is the wrong word. No, yeah. it's not. We're not We're not watching. Um, what's a sludgy. Well, we're not watching Blade Runner 2049 over here. That's that's yeah. a lethargically paced movie, you know? <laughs> Amazing movie. But it's yeah. not It's not fast paced at all. You know? uh, apart from one or two shots, visually 
Visuals of the film are utterly bland, lifeless, and pretentious. Bland, so yes. Good. Lifeless, pretentious. No. Is a stretch, I think. Well, I can pick a little pretentious. You think? A little bit. Uh, I think it's so unpretentious. This I think movie. mine is just yeah. like, oh, this fucking. I don't know. It's, it's too <laughs> built up for me to. I don't mm. know. It, it, mm. it, it is story yeah, okay. wise. The scale, the scale does get ahead of itself. Maybe, yeah. Story details are very often left unexplained and esoteric, full of obscure jargon and fake gravitas. Some of the worst plot holes, illogic, convenience, contradictions, and contra- contrivances? Contra- contrivances, yep. Ever abound in this film. So, to me, that sentence was, was a so lot of worried. esoteric and yeah. fake gravitas. Mm-hmm. He's talking about himself there. Yeah. But, I mean, if, if there was more, you know, fake gravitas and yeah. esoteric things, I think it'd be better. I agree. The guy's yeah. like, oh, what the fuck is a bend my dick jizz rat? <laughs> I hate this movie. Yeah, keep it more fucking... <laughs> Uh, first two hours are bloated and narratively unfocused. That that I did say. I do agree with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Not only does this film, again, display all the worst tendencies of bad science fiction, but its universal acclaim demonstrates the dead state of modern Hollywood and its audience suffers further from content. I think I just sound like a hater. What the yeah, hell? That's a little much. Mar- yeah, I was yeah. like, the movie's bad. I feel like I feel like I feel like if I read his reviews for every other blockbuster movie it's the last the ten years, thing. it'll be yeah. the enemy verbatim, the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, this one is from Joey Shapiro. Ooh. Ooh. Favorite mm-hmm. movies? Don't look now. Which don't look now? Oh, this. N- which don't look now? Mm-hmm. Like nineteen seventy-three. I know. 1973, yeah. Uh, I don't know, that's making it weird, I guess. His other favorite movie is As I Was Moving Ahead, Occasionally I Saw Brief Glimpses of Beauty. Oh my god, okay. It's one of these two. A 285-minute movie by Jonas Mekas. What? A 285-minute movie? Yeah. Oh, is that that, like, five-hour movie that exists or something? I don't know. Gremlins. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. He put that on his list. And uh, broadcast news. Okay. All of his favorite movies, though, to his credit, he has watched and reviewed multiple times, and his review has increased up to five stars. So I, I feel like it's a... Yeah, anyways. Okay. He says he's, he's a lover, not a hater. So he must make exceptions sometimes that a film has a technical genius and knows how to treat giant, fucked up, futuristic architecture in interesting ways, but he does not have human emotions. Mm. If ever there was a director born to direct car commercials, a man interested in shiny metallic surfaces and landscapes absent of people, it is Denis Villeneuve. Take away the Hans Zimmer and the drone shots of the desert and what is left but a Christopher Nolan movie directed by AI. I don't even like those. Soulless, lifeless, lifeless, somehow dense with plot, while also feeling so uneventful. Javier Bardem and the Worms are the only things I liked. Only things that were false. I liked the eco terrorism. That's a great review. Yeah, I love that review. There you go. Yeah. Okay, I don't mind that review at all. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem is though. Yeah, I mean, I get what suck. he means about the yeah. the 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 car commercial thing. Mm-hmm. And people are the uh, worst part of the movie. But you look at uh, Nicholas Winding Refn. Mm-hmm. Love his movies. Yeah. He would not be good for doing. No. Anything. Not at all. It's just do a silent movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No but talking. Nicholas Winding Refn also. He has made car commercials. He's made cologne mm-hmm. commercials. Oh, yeah. They're great. I think the best commercials. Cologne, yeah, 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 they're fantastic. Really, I've never seen. Them I don't think that's. A, I don't think that's necessarily a dig. No, I don't oh, think it's David a dig. Lynch I think it's just like that. what you're. Yeah, David Lynch has done commercials. They're putting. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think I get what he means. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for a movie like Dune that is so heavily reliant on humanity, which is weird because but a, it's a false rival. humanity. Yeah, but, but it, the thing is, the thing yeah. is that it's all about lying to real humanity. Yeah. It's all about lying to the people who are trying to follow you, and so of course it feels apathetic because they don't want to be they, they they just want to control. So they're faking their happiness. They're faking this. Maybe that that maybe that was translated badly as on film. You know what I mean? And I think what you said before too about Denis Villeneuve very much making these movies from Paul's perspective mm-hmm. adds to what you're saying now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I found some. Five stars, they're all full of shit. <laughs> yeah, they're all just dick riders, right? The, 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 you know, like those guys on Letterboxd that review stuff, but like you can tell they review every blockbuster movie like in a good way, kind of thing. Yeah. 
That's all reviews. One guy's like, oh, I love the brutalism in this movie. I'm like, dude, there's like one scene that's brutalist. The whole movie takes place in the fucking desert. Well, it's four minutes out of three hours. Yeah, like, yeah. What, what are you talking about? Like, it's just, but yeah. That's uh. what I, I found all of the half star. A lot of the half stars were people rating it half star. And then the review was like, I haven't actually watched it yet. I'm just trying to deal with the, the bell curve. Just trying to compensate for the bell curve. Dude, people. I'm like, okay, fuck off, dude. People <laughs> fucking love this movie. Yeah. But people also fucking love Letterboxd and just giving good movies dog shit reviews on Letterboxd so that they don't get too good of a score. No, I know, I know, but I, what I'm saying is that, like, the general population, like, fucking love this movie. Yeah. Because, again, it's important to make these things own from Space on the Memory Card. Still, still got that one. Oh, that one's dead, too. Oh, shit. All right, guys, we're technical difficulties. Okay, we clean animate it, animate it, baby. Yeah, we could just keep the audio going. Hell yeah, yeah. let's keep the audio going. Just, 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 just put, just put some pictures and stills and whatever. Yeah. No, just I have, mean, a, just have, just have like a, 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 a please stand by screen with like two anime girls dancing or something. Hell yeah. Some, some cringe ass shit. Another card. Hell yeah. Dude. Oh, I have one too. You got it, guys. Yeah. All right, yeah. It's the one you just. Sorry for my out. cat, guys. My cat's being fucking annoying too. Uh. Yeah. What, what were we saying? What was that? That was the one with the stuff on it. Oh, dude! All I was saying, it's it's just huh? it's Did this whole just now? Yeah. like, okay. no, like 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 not just like kids that watch TikTok, like a lot of film people think this is an amazing fucking movie. I think so too. I think this is really fun. No, no, a lot of film people think it's a ten out of ten movie, not an eight out of ten movie. I think it's because again, I think maybe <laughs> maybe maybe it's just different ex- like viewing experience. But the ways, the themes, and the the, 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 the the themes that were explored in this movie were really well done. I honestly think that's like a main point of it. I think that's why a lot of people found it so good, is because within two and a half hours... Yeah, but, there's, there's, yeah, but the themes and stuff, but cin- cinematically, like, or like mm-hmm. style-wise, nothing special in this Yeah, movie. but I yeah. think cinematically, I think cinematically though, and this is going to be a hot take uh, for, for, for my sake, because I'm always a big fan of style over substance too. But I think people are tired of style. I think people are looking for in a time where we are only bombarded with style. What do you mean I, only bombarded? The last movie with style was like no, 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 no. like <laughs> just in general. When it comes to con, and and again, this is just to talk about the the generation we're living in on how we consume art. People are bombarded with style at all times at any corner. When? Right now, like if you're looking at your UX, your user experience on your phone is style. It's a design thing. It, you're looking at content. It's fast, fast, fast. Boom, 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 There's boom. like no style in content. What's, what you doing? We're, not, we're not talking about the same kind of style. No, but, okay, I'm, bear with me, okay? So like all that we've been doing for the last few years, I think is very much online. Like a lot of the, ever since COVID hit, I think people have been bombarded with different types of styles and aesthetics and, you know, aesthetics is the capitalization of, of arts okay it's like oh you're selling like look uh, look at all these um subcultures that are now bombarded on your tiktok on your instagram people are kind of i think tired of um just art for not just art's sake but art Con- just art for, for content's sake art for content's sake mm. and i think when you're watching a con- a movie that's much more ooh, let's take our time here or like oh let's let's hint at this let's hint at that yeah sure we're not going anywhere but where where do you want to go? Seriously, where do you want to go in the like, story of Dune? It, it, not story wise, I'd like to go somewhere, but it, it's, <laughs> worm boy. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's supposed to be visual though. Like that's the medium. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like theme can take you so far, yes. but it's the book. But I book. but I think it yeah. Translate but people don't read. But mm-hmm. people will not read a book. Yeah, but what we're saying yeah. is that there could be a lot more cinematic yeah. style and interesting yeah, shots yeah. and colors. I agree. I agree. That, that doesn't make a good movie. If I there's theme and someone could read a book. Look, but you Laz, have some kind of Laz isn't talking about us. Yeah, yeah, no. We are the wrong audience for this mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we love style. Yeah, for I love general, style too. I love style. I'm including you. I'm including yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I understand mm-hmm. where you guys are coming from with like the lower ratings in mind, but when you're coming at it from a perspective of it has to be accessible. It has to be adaptable. It has to be based on all of this lore while simultaneously not really talking about that lore that much and still trying to make this a, a movie. It's got to be marketable. It's got to be marketable. Yeah. It, you have to apply. And this is what's insane about movies that are supposed to be art house movies mm-hmm. that turn out to be blockbusters. And this is where the screw up with Blade Runner happened. It was never marketed as anything. 
It didn't know what it wanted to be. No, it, it, sorry, it, it was Vin, an sorry, movie. Let me rephrase that. Villeneuve knew what it wanted it to be. Yeah. The studios yes. and the audiences, audiences had no fucking clue what was yes. going on. That's why it hit with us. And not because, with Because we knew, we knew what we wanted it to be. Right, we exactly. knew it was going to be... Uh, I was we ex- knew it was Villeneuve's Blade Runner. This is not Villeneuve's Dune. This is just Dune. Yeah. Wow. Kind of, there we go. But yeah. here, here's the thing, right? You're, you're talking about you're talking about style and stuff like that. How many cut? How many movies come out a year that actually have style? Very few. No, mm-hmm. he wasn't talking about. No, I'm not movies. talking about like, movies. I know he's talking about, about, like, about like content content. in general. Yeah. You know. Honestly, honestly. If but you, even then, you compare this movie with a lot of other movies. Okay, that come I'll out, be honest. This has I'll a be lot honest, of style. This is gonna sound insane. This is gonna sound insane. What? Some thirteen-year-olds and fourteen-year-olds are quite good with editing TikTok. They're quite good with doing those stupid fucking edgy... Yeah, they have no edgy. style. They're doing TikTok style. That's They're it. doing style. It's just... All it is is style. And that's... No, I know, but it's all the same style, as I'm saying. But, mm, yes. <laughs> but the thing is, is people are so bombarded. We're talking about we're talking about like unique individuals. Yeah, I know, style. I know, I know. But people are so bombarded with these... But again, within that... In, like, if you're editing... If you're doing like those edgelord TikTok edits of um, Anakin Skywalker and Paul no, but, uh, no, but, and, but, and last, uh, last, Patrick last. Bateman... Like no, but wait, wait, wait. Let him cook. Let me cook. No, I, I, I know I'm, what you're saying. <laughs> you're saying that these people are they're constantly bombarded with style all the time. With even if it's a shitty style, they're always on. There's style it's everywhere. Always style. So you're saying it's a nice relief to have a movie that doesn't have that much style. I understand what you're saying, but this movie still has a lot of style compared to most movies. We're just talking about like compared to Denis Villeneuve. Mm-hmm. Right, but rating it as a Denis Villeneuve thing, I think that's what does the disservice to this whole discourse is that yeah, I know. so many people like these film bros and these film nerds are coming in and they're like this is terrible but then you have these other people who are like this is wow what is this like yeah because those people just watch transformers all fucking day but that's I'm sorry imp- but don't you think that's important no it's not okay his style is flawless too Absolutely. like even a better and worse so yes. having tiktok doesn't mean it's no 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 Th- that's no that's very true but the listen, thing is listen I, to I, nick bro man of few words but very wise no, ones I, yes. I, yes but i think that's where that's where the thing is is that so many people have been used to style without any substance that this to them i think was like a wake up call that's that's me well I the think, first one i mean the the of the first one pretty I think highly too also <laughs> to what you're saying yeah in the age of content and style We've also seen a massive increase in so-called cinephiles. And yeah. with the mm-hmm. rise of Letterboxd <laughs> as a genuine social media that people actively use, Very I active. think it's important for people who want to be cinephiles to have a movie that is accessible. Because no one's going to go... To introduce them. Because people aren't people aren't gonna go watch the fucking color pomegranate and be like this was the fucking <laughs> best. The, you know, you know see. another example of me me and Lee thinking exactly the same. That's exactly the movie I knew, I knew you were gonna yes. say that fucking movie. But <laughs> this is just enough style for all of these people who are getting into movies and are sure. getting beginning to appreciate mm-hmm. this type of style to be like yes, dude, this fucking rule. Then they're gonna watch Ace on Z. Then are, they're gonna are watch. You, are you saying right? that if they yeah. if they develop their audio cinephile whatever? Enough in a couple of years. If they, you're saying if they go back to this movie, they won't rate it as highly. Is that the not hypothetical only that? We're hear? Well, maybe. But what they're gonna do is they're gonna appreciate. It's it's yeah, kind of like a gateway. They'll have an emotional connection. Yeah, they'll, they'll have an emotional story. connection. Yeah. It's like me with Cat in the Hat. No, I'm just saying hypothetically. Yeah. Hypo- yeah. Hypothetically, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not. The, I'm not the messiah, dude. I can't predict the future. <laughs> I'm no prophet. I ain't got no spice. You know who me. is though? Connor OJ. Oh, interesting. Shout out. Uh, this review's too long. I don't know why I saved it. Oh. Okay, so, okay, hold up. He says, ha- he says, have you guys lost your minds? Have the years of Marvel movies made you so starved for anything else that this is what we've landed on? This movie currently has a 4.6 out of 5. That would put it ahead of Spielberg, ahead of Bergman, ahead of Ron Carway, on par with Seven Samurai and The Godfather. That is this guy's complaint. Was that your review? More wise words from him. I agree with all of it. That's very valid. That's That's fucking valid. valid. He says, I was a fan of the first one. I was there with what it was doing. By the end of it, I thought, you know what? By the end of this one, I retroactively added half a star to David Lynch's Dune. (laughs) I legitimately think it's better. At (laughs) least that movie wasn't afraid of what it was. Yeah. Mm. That is... Who's that guy? That's a great review. Who's that guy? This is... Uh, Alec Dietz 
whose favorite movies Alex are Dietz. Star oh. Trek First Contact. Yo, I love it. I'm a big Star Trek fan. Alex Dietz, come on the podcast. What's happening? <laughs> Aliens. Oh, the best one. Oh. With the, with the Chet Sheen. No, thanks. Uh, debatable, uh, debatable, debatable. Ran. Nice. Good, yeah. That's solid. Really good. And red. It's red. Three colors, red. Oh, uh, that's the. Uh, it's the. Uh, Chris Guy, Chris Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's he from? Listen, his oh. favorite. He's got a. He's got a good <laughs> red, white, and blue. Czechoslovakia. Yeah, he's a. It's a big art house trilogy, right? Okay. Red, white, and blue. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Listen, this guy has Star Trek: First Contact as his favorite fucking movie, right? Yeah. The, he he like he's 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 talking facts over here. That's your favorite one. The out of the movies, Star Trek yeah. movies, yeah, for sure. No, Search for Spock. No, fuck really? no. First contact's way better, dude. Dude, I like Star Trek Beyond, baby. Oh, shut up. Bro. This guy. <laughs> I'm a I'm a DS9 kind of guy, oh, right? Okay, so. Yeah. so this one's a funny one. Half star. Wait, wait, let's, go, let's go back to that review real quick. Okay. Yeah, well, okay. What did the guy say again? <laughs> it's afraid of being what it wants. No, no, no. But he said something specific. Uh, that the, its score on Letterboxd would put it ahead of Spielberg. No, let me, let me just, let no me it's just afraid like, of... of no, no, I, only no, read the first, was... I only read the first three paragraphs. Another okay, yeah. So what I want to say is that like... With art and media today, the quality is so low that if something that was average 20, 15 years ago comes out today, it's like god tier. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Especially, sure. the biggest example I could give is video games, right? Mm. So many shit video games come out that are just the same thing. Battle Pass, online, shoot, 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 boom, 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 that aren't interesting at all. Yeah. I blame Assassin's Creed. Ah, I blame, I don't know what I blame. I blame Call of Duty. Yeah, okay, word. Because um, the first couple of Assassin's Creed are pretty fucking good. Yeah, and then they made 17 the, more that were the exact same. They made 20, like, they 17? Made, uh, no, they made 17 Final right. Fantasies and they're all fucking good, alright? Yeah, but I'm not Japanese. Anyways, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, like, you know, all these games come out and then I play one game, like, let's say Witcher 3 or whatever the fuck. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. But then I go back to some PlayStation 3 games, PlayStation 2 games, that are like... Yeah. They were like whatever average back in the day. Yeah, dude, shout out to dude there's they, they they shit on games today. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that like when a piece of media comes out today, it's it's just in a sea of shit media. Yeah, Video like, games, music, fucking you movies. Know what, dude? That when something that is good comes out, it's like amazing, you know? But let's say you put Dune Part Two, like I don't know, bring it back some years when movies, the golden age of, or like whatever, whatever era of yeah. movies you want to put it in, you know? Yeah. Is it going to be better than all the other movies? No. I don't, I don't buy what you're selling me, buddy. You don't? No, dude. I'm pretty sure every single generation says that ever. You go back, really? you go back to exactly the area of video games <laughs> you're talking about. I guarantee you. <laughs> Half, I don't know because people playing video games at that time thought the video games were better. Back I then. don't know Pong. No, no. Compared to that, people in 2007, that was like maybe video games advanced too quickly for this comparison. <laughs> but for sure, you go back to the golden age of sci-fi in cinema, and people were saying movies were better 20 years ago. Or just with music was always better when you were like yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's not. True. Yeah, but the the difference now and back then is now there's so much of it. It's because everything's saturated because of the accessibility of it. Not just accessibility, but there's just so much. But I don't think that makes it worse. No, yeah, exactly. It's not that it makes it worse. It's that, like, it makes it so that there's a lot more bad stuff surrounding mm. it. That makes it look there's better. Just, yeah. Because yeah. there's so much of it. The bar is lowering. 30 years ago, you had to make a good movie mm-hmm. for it to sell. Yeah. Now you don't have to make a good anything for it to sell. You just punch out quantity, quantity, quantity over quality all day. I, dude, I don't know. The, the no. market would speak against that because there's so much more being made now you need to stand out yep. back then all you had to do was make a movie you not, were really. One of three not really not really bro how, how many how many fucking out. how many fucking blockbuster bullshit movies come out of every year bro that yeah, make less, so much less more, and less no, you, you gotta make something that's perfectly in line with everything else with the exact same formula as the last it's become more formulaic right sure there, yeah. 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 It's but the yeah Ghostbusters 4 but like the same thing yeah, but there's yeah. less. But no one less... thinks Ghostbusters Four is good. No, it's yeah, not, everyone's it's gonna yeah. make money. Yeah, because people have kids. Yeah, and, and, and it's like it's like it's like Chris Rossi's friends, bro. People that want to just watch paint dry. Oh. Remember we said that in the car one time. Yeah. One, two are the only ones that exist. <laughs> They're both. I don't like. I don't. That's why I was gonna hold my tongue. I don't like that. But it's like people no, people want to like, watch these movies and stuff like that for entertainment and to just like, my their mind can be fucking blank and just watch something, right? Yeah. But very few people want to watch movies as like artistic experience, in my opinion. 
Yeah. And But what I'm saying is there's so many movies that come out. There's so many videos and content that comes out that, like, you know, you get a good movie and it's, like, amazing because everyone's so used to all the sort of shit that they see there's like, wow, it's so fucking incredible because they're so used to all the bad shit that comes out. But I also <laughs> think because there's so much out there and it's so accessible now, people only watch what they know they're going to like, mm. which boosts ratings. That's also what's lowering the bar. It's not just the actual quality of what's being made. Because I, I would argue that a lot of cinema today is a lot fucking better than it used to be. Yeah. I mean, the stuff we're into, not the blockbuster shit. Because I'm watching what I know I'll like. Yeah. And I'm watching shit that's... But I'm talking about that, this in the know? context, in the surrounding of blockbuster movies. Yeah. And I, but I think, I'm not talking about, like, you know... I think that's a testament to what makes this movie good, though. Is that you have the Marvel fanboys loving this. You have the pseudo-cinephiles loving this. You have the sci-fi geeks loving this. No, no, I, I know. It, I'm not saying it's a bad movie because of it. I'm just saying, like, people are rating it. At, like, based on what we're seeing, yeah. this is the greatest fucking movie ever made. Yeah. Artistically, blah, blah, in every way, people are making this movie out to be, like, the best fucking thing that's ever hit a screen. Right? Yeah. It's not. It's very good. It's yeah. not. It's good for those reasons too that you're saying, but I'm saying because it's surrounded by all the other shit, that makes it so that when everyone's watching this, they're rating it as the yeah. best thing they've ever seen. But I, I, I also think. Listen, I'm right. You're wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm. I'm saying I. I think that is also a product of Letterbox, of this app's popularity. No, but it's on IMDb too. It's it, it's it's the highest rated movie on IMDb also. Is it also? Yep. Okay. I it's surprise Shawshank Shank Redemption. Okay. That I know. Okay. I think Shawshank Redemption is a better movie than this. I haven't seen it. You know, I am a better movie. Yeah. You know, would you say Shawshank Redemption is a better movie? Than this, yeah. 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 I would say this is better than Shutter Island. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Shutter Island, Shutter Island's whatever, anyway. Yeah, I know, I just thought of it. That's you said actually, Shawshank Redemption, I thought Shutter Island. That's his worst movie. You think this is a better movie than Poor Things? No. This is higher rated than Poor Things. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. You think this is a better movie than Dogtooth? No. Well, Heart of better. Glass. No. Best movie of all time, dude. See, it's better movie than the fucking dwarf movie by, uh, what's his face there? Even North Star Small? No, I yeah. think Even North Star Small. I actually like that movie more, dude. That movie's yeah, cool. it is. Because it is better. Okay, wait, let yeah, me, let me read this stock. half-star review because it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> this guy says, Timothy Chalamet is doing a Nicolas Cage impression the entire time. What? That's it. That's his review. He thinks Timothy Chalamet I'm Atreides. I don't know. I don't, uh... Nick Cage. I don't get it either. I don't even get the joke. Julia, shut up. it's one of the most liked reviews for this movie. I got. I found one that was five stars that said, um, "This is what happens when mothers tell their sons they're special." <laughs> <laughs> okay, from someone who's read the book, I know you read the book, so I saved that one. But we heard from you, so that's fine. Okay. I don't. Need, I don't care what fucking Sammy has to say anymore. Okay. Fuck Sammy. Unfortunately for this person, Aloy, his favorite uh-huh. movies are Moral. It's a Wonderful Life, The French Dispatch, Our Little Sister. Okay. Uh, gave it two stars. So somewhere along the lines of what I gave it. Yeah, sure. And he said, unfortunately, Villeneuve is a filmmaker I care about and who has made some of my favorite movies. So I felt compelled to sit through this, even though this is three-hour experience veered closely to the reason why I abstain from the whole MCU superhero industrial complex. Visual and sonic assault to the senses that only emphasize a hollow narrative filled with tedious socio-political and religious metaphors. I'm a grown man. I don't need to pretend there's something deeper to glean from this. Oh, I don't think he's getting it at all. Then. I don't think so either. Yeah. Still holding out for Messiah because it's my favorite novel of the uh, Paul trilogy. Bring on the dis- deconstruction of the concept of Messiah and the affirmation of Herbert's anti-imperialistic message. See you in five years. Tia Sendaya is the heart of this movie. Her final look of the scene. So literally everything we liked about this, everything we disliked about this movie is what this person liked, mm-hmm. and everything we liked about this movie is what this person disliked. And he read the books too. And he read the books. Yeah, yeah. Inter- that's yeah. Hmm. I thought that was interesting. That is funny. I don't know if that changed. But I did actually. I agree with him. Actually, I didn't get. I didn't get like this whole like uh, jealous girl ex girlfriend. No, I got like oh you fucking I I I, I you disgust me. It's not even the ick. It's just like he hasn't know. killed anyone yet. How can no, he it's the, it's more like it's the idea that and really you're Elvis. gonna you're gonna it's what? because he killed Elvis. True. Yeah. I I think it's it's also it's it's like 
you're you're not yeah sure you didn't kill all of us but you're going against um you're going against what you told me you believed in yeah which was oh i because yeah sure we know that paul changed his mind but he never told zendaya yeah. And that's yeah. where no, he doesn't change his mind. Zendaya knows it's just part of this political bullshit plan no, no, to free no, her no, people. No, 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 Zendaya does not know that. In the book, we're in the about book, Zendaya, not Chani. Chani, we're talking about Zendaya. Oh, I'm talking about Chani. Yeah, I'm talking <laughs> about. Chani. So Chani does not know that in the in in this in this adaptation, she doesn't know that. She should though. Okay, but that's again your again the ad adaptation. It's, but what, what, what what do you think would have been better, her not knowing or her knowing? Her not knowing. Why? Because then that proves the point that Paul was always going to only think uh, he's not always going to share stuff with Shani. It's it's not about Shani. It's about No, Paul. but in the book, he doesn't share with her that he's going to do this either. But she she loves him. She understands I what know, he's doing. I understand. But when someone and actually she, she should like it because the reason he's doing it is to free her fucking people. But she does not. She's not aware of that. She's yeah, not she aware, is. No, but she's not aware of this whole other <laughs> plan in the mix. I, there's this look of disdain because of the fact that really you're going against what you told me you believed in. Fuck you. Like you know, it, it's this if in you, the movie. In the movie. In yeah. The book. In the movie. Yes. That's why I yeah. think I, I I like that little scene there where she looks at him and she's like, "Okay, bye," and then he leaves. That works. Oh, it works. Okay. All right. Well, that's, I, I, th- I that's, think it, that's why I rated. Such... I think they could have done it in a more subtle way. Oh, I think it was pretty subtle. <laughs> like. What her her being mad, getting up and leaving the room is not very subtle. No, but it was like in the sense that it was just like it was just understood. Paul saw, and Paul didn't even run after him. Now you want to talk about star cross? He can't. He's fucking. He's negotiating his power over the whole universe. But that's the point. What's he gonna do? Oh, sorry. Hold that fucking thought. I'm gonna go get my girlfriend. He's Amber. He can do whatever he wants. Not yet. But but no. But that's the point, Dante. And that's the thing is that he should have done that. But Paul isn't that person. And that's what Shani and that's what the audience should finally understand. It's like, oh wait, he's this meek kind of opportunist. He's finally sure. realizing, wait, opportunities here. Hello, Florence Pugh. Hell yeah. Yeah, but he had to, the, you know. Yeah, but I, I find it weird that his entire character development was based on him fucking a worm in a pond. <laughs> like up until that point, he was like, no, 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 no. You're still and on then this. He fuck. fucks a worm in a pond. He sucks on its piss. <laughs> And then wakes up and says, I'm going to nuke my own planet. I'm going to nuke the people I'm trying Dude, to save. it's just a regular Wednesday, bro. Yeah, but but, but last, yeah, I, I what, what I'm trying to say is thing. that they could have done it more subtle in that, like, what were you going to say? I just, I just think that, to me, is where the movie lost me. Okay. Was that all of his character development happens in one scene. Sure. It's like a switch. Hmm. That's super but, fair. But in and my, to me, yeah, that was yeah. a cop-out. In my opinion, his character development doesn't even start until the fucking second book. Yeah, but we're talking about, we're the, talking movies about the movies. I know we're talking about the fucking the movies. Book. Pretend you haven't read the book. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? I think it could have been done more subtle, the Chani exit at the end, in a way that she could have been standing there, watch all this shit go down, and just have a look. Mm. Have a well, okay, look so you scene. got Paul, you got Florence Pugh, and in the middle, there's Shani noticing the two white savior like it, it, it just it just cuts to her and she's just like there with a fucking look. Mm. That I mean, probably would have been better. That's it would have been good. better? Yeah. A look and maybe a tear. Oh, I mean, she was she was, was she not the only one who didn't kneel to him? Yeah. She was that could have been enough. That could have been enough. She didn't have to storm off. That could have been, they could have just. Yeah. And the thing there. is, she she storms off right after he says, I'm going to take her hand. So but that's what I, makes it feel like she does. I think, I think that makes a big difference to you. Yeah. Because you've read the book yeah. and you know what her character should be. But for us who haven't read the book, that's a very small difference that we wouldn't care about. Yeah. Well, that doesn't change enough of her character for us because we don't know what her character could have been. So to for us, having her, it, her role in this movie is no longer her role in the book. Her role in the movie now is the audience for is the audience's perspective. She's the stand- No, I can't, bro. I can't fucking take it. She's no. the stand. I can't do no. We no. the only way no. the only way the audience can fully understand the betrayal Paul is placing upon the Fremen before the Fremen know is through Canning, right? But but he doesn't kill the Fremen, bro. In the story. I know, but Chani's smart enough to understand that he's changing and that he's not who he said he was and he's using this power and he she's losing his 
this trust. is this is why I'm giving it. I'm keeping my rating at so, eight. So because I, I I got that. You know here's I mean? the thing, right? So how is she gonna have sex with him and have a kid? Have Bro, kid? I don't know. That's my question the... too. I don't I don't know. That's my question too. But was she gonna? Ha- is he gonna have sex with the the emperor lady? I don't know. I think so. And then and then have Leto. I don't know. That's a good question. You see, because yeah. if that if she doesn't have sex with Chani, if he doesn't have sex with Chani to have Leto, yeah, <laughs> whole story's ruined in my opinion. Well, they're not gonna. Okay, again, to the point. I don't of, care who. It has to be a friend. That baby comes out half fucking worm, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, he turns into a worm. He comes out a like human, bro. Better, dude. Um, is is he actually half Harkonnen in the book too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because okay, to that... me too, that felt like, oh, of course. No, 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 it's, 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 it's a long, oh, he's the messiah, he's Fremen, he's Arconan, he's Atreides, oh, fuck, oh, yeah. He's a mite, I'm a mite. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all, like, like you said, it's all this eugenics inbreeding yeah, shit yes, with yeah, all these different yeah, houses, yeah. and all these houses have this bullth- bullshit mythology placed behind their bloodline and lineage right. that doesn't mean anything in reality, and that's the theme, right, yeah, you yeah. know, so. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's Dune for you. That's Dune for you. That's We're Dune. Dune. Yeah. Thanks Shut the for... fuck, Laz. The door's right there. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. You know, like, <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> Thanks for tuning in to the Monolith. Films. Thank you for having me on again. Thanks of for course. coming. Man. Yes. Thank you. The Laz. Monolith Film Podcast. Follow my... him on which which Instagram would you like to plug? M thirty one Creative. <laughs> One of my best friends, Laz. One of my best friends. One of my best friends. No, you can follow me on my personal one, but I'm private, so you know I'll figure out whether or not I want to accept you. Just follow M- M31 Creative, right? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, check us out everywhere you can get your podcasts. And, and on YouTube, whatever Spotify, you know, we're we're, we're we're gonna drop the merch. Just got fucking, the merch right here. Merch they got, right they here. All, merch, uh, mine, mine was in merch, the wash. Baby. Mine was in the wash. I have a Volvadina shirt. Uh, Shout out. Uh, I mean, the singer's an asshole. Fuck you. But yeah, catch us everywhere you want to catch us where you get your podcast YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever. Uh, we're we're going to drop merch soon. Stay tuned for that. And cheers. Cheers.